So you see the frustration from a broadcaster's <laughs> side of it of not having that. See our midweek intern, Daryl Brown, out on the field. We appreciate uh, Louisiana College loaning him out to us. Hunter Martinson puts a foot into this one, and it is going to go to Stallone's on the far side. He's going to have it at the 5. Now 10, 15, cuts to the outside, 20. Trying to find the sideline and get hit, gets hit hard and driven down, but he's out to the 27-yard line. Good stop for the Wildcats, number 43, and that is Spencer Broussard. Spencer Broussard out of Gaydon, Louisiana, getting some work done. So, uh, Coach, now we're going to get an opportunity to see this Oklahoma Panhandle team. And one of the first things that jumps out at us mm. is that Brandon Stevens is, in fact, in their quarterback and not listed on the two deep at all. Right, so whether that's a uh, 13 or a, a switch of numbers would be interesting. Stevens brings a man in motion, now flips to the other side. Three receivers to the top, one to the near side. Now empties out the backfield, looking that way, facing pressure. Ball is going to be completed out to Stallones, but uh, finding nowhere, kind of falling down and catching that one. Yeah, a lot of motion and moving right there. That's when you, that's a, a first play right there because they have to practice all that stuff. Not a traditional play, so I thought they had something right there, I guess, and uh, good thing we uh, defended it really well. Jamarian Jones, the sophomore running back, in the backfield with Stevens. Stevens brings another man in motion. Jones, though, gets it up the middle. Great work by that interior line led by Michael Latin in there making that stop. Also there, number 97 for the Wildcats is DeMarco Collins. Michael Latin, like I was mentioned earlier, a guy I was fortunate enough to recruit him uh, out of Captain Shreve, uh, wore cowboy boots, and was, was just a good old country boy, and uh, is a really good football player. Third down and eight for the Aggies. They're at the 30-yard line. No score. This one just underway. Do the pre-read look over to the sideline, and... Stevens in that offense, ready to go to work now. Three receivers to the near side, one to the top. Again, Jones goes out in motion. Going down the field is Stevens. That ball is complete on a fantastic catch. Great coverage for the, uh, for the Wildcats by Brandon Isaac. Yeah, the pl play before they came in motion and, and our guy followed him that lets their offensive coordinator see. They're in, we're in man coverage, so that's a good man shot they were able to take knowing that what defense we're playing in the coverage. Going tempo, go the Aggies. They make it into Wildcat territory for the first time at the 48, first and 10. Ball is given to Jones. He tries to get to the outside. Going to pick up maybe six on the play. It'll come up second down and four. That's a quarterback power read, so look, maybe later on you might see that quarterback pull the football and go up the middle, depending on what our end does. And again, a new quarterback in there, not leaving listed on the two deep. We picked that up in their warm-ups. So one receiver to the top, two to the near side. This this tempo offense is going as Steven switches. Jones directly behind him now. H-back switches sides and now goes back to the other. A lot of motion in this offense early on. Handoff goes to Jones up the middle, but not going for the fake. Brought down after a gain of just a yard. Big second down play right there. You know, you win second down by not giving up half the distance, and LC's defense said that right there. What do you think about this tempo from Oklahoma Panhandle, Coach? I told you there's two philosophies. You, you know, run tempo and take shots or try to feel them out, and so it looks like they're trying to go the tempo version. Third down and four from the 42-yard line of the Wildcats. 12 and a half to go here in a scoreless first drive. Stevens adjusting his man, puts Jones out in motion again, goes over the top with it, but there's a pre- Snap flag, and now there's going to be a pass interference one come in on Brandon Isaac, but it looks like we had a false start before the play. Yeah, I had a perfect angle. I was like, both those receivers were on the football. Somebody, that's that's an illegal formation right there, and then I saw him try to fix it the last minute and didn't get it done. Bailed out now, and it's going to end up being an offsetting penalty as the, the pass interference is going to come in at the end of the play. Mm. We'll go down to our official on the sideline. <laughs> Illegal shift on the offense, pass interference, defense number 11, those fouls off at third down. See, and that was one of those that would have really worked in the Wildcats' favor, but they bailed out on the on the, the pass attempt to the near side. Brandon Isaac whistled for the penalty. Yeah, that was unfortunate. You know, where it looks like our defense has done a lot of man coverage during this first drive, and so you're going to get a few of those, but we'll see if we stick with it. Stevens and that Aggie offense back third down and four from the 43 yard, 42 yard line. Looking to make, uh, looking to draw the Wildcats off. Was able to jump back in was was Collins. 12-16 to go here, first quarter of play. Again, a man in motion, 
ends over two receivers to the top to the near side. Hits the motion man, but uh, incomplete there. And Isaac just uh, kicking himself. B.I. had a shot at stepping in and picking that one off. Well, that, they fooled him. They've been playing man coverage the entire drive. At the very last second, they switched to zone. He thought he was going to get a quick out and man, and the corner was just sitting on it and was able to break that down. Great job by uh, Coach Jansen and the defensive coordinator and then the staff of getting that switch up. Micah Dunn and Mikhail Franklin back deep to receive. The Wildcats do a good job of holding and uh, now have to be careful here as the, the ball will get kicked mm -hmm. into possible running into the kicker. Not, not good. Franklin calls for it at the 10, works his way to the 15, coach, and that would have been a, a disastrous running into the kicker penalty because that would have given the five yards, and I know you, that's what you were, I'm were sorry. cringing I gotta, for. I've got to stop being a fan here. I'm going to hear. I'm going <laughs> to say I've got to. I've got to be professional. Here we go. It's, look, you're a guest in this, so you're here just for just for the the time and just just hang out and enjoy and continue describing what you do. Powell and that offense making their way out. McKaylen Milburn will get the start back there at running back. Mark Kalen in the backfield. You've got a receiver to the near side as Cole three to the far side. And that is Micah Dunn coming in motion to that cluster. And then some more movement brings Darbone, the tight end, to an H back to the left. Milburn gets it. He's going to try to get to the outside. Slips down as he had an opportunity to cut to the outside. But cutting on that turf is difficult. It's going to be tough. That was a really good zone run right there, zone left. And he cut it all the way out the back side. So uh, we had it there. We'll see if we'll hit it again. Looking for uh, big things to come from those Wildcats. Tight coverage on the near side on Cole. No safety help to the near side. There's an opportunity to go get him. Canaan Leone is split out wide with Dunn. Receivers are stacked up top. Let's see what kind of combination they'll have together up there. Powell brings Leone in motion. Play action. Going over the top is Powell. Powell's got a man open. The play is there, and that's caught by Dunn. Dunn to the 30, Dunn to the 20, to the 10, Dunn to the house. Touchdown, LC. Touchdown, Micah Dunn. Well, there was no feeling them out right there. So Coach Giardina <laughs> dialed up a shot play on second long and uh, and converted. So that was a uh, wow. 82 yards on that uh, big time action. And look. Throwing the football down the field has not been a specialty of Powell, but put the ball right on the money. Perfect amount of touch, right spot. Great job, James Powell. And uh, Micah able to run right under that 82-yard pitch and catch. And that puts the Wildcats on top as Hunter Martinson looks to add the PAT. Snap his back hold is down. This one is going to be through, but there's going to be a false start, or they're going to call it. Looks like the official to far side was calling offsides, if that's the case. Offside. Defense number 38. Penalty is declined. Penalty is declined. Extra point is good. Seven to nothing. Wildcats lead back in 60 on 104-3 the bridge. And go. And we're back to Louisiana College. Seven nothing. Wildcats take the lead. Just 
Three minutes, 46 seconds into this one. Hunter Martinson looking to put a foot into it. Drives this one back, his second kickoff of the game. It f f pushes Stallones back to the one-yard line. He's out to the 10 now. Switch to the 15, going to be brought down to 20. And a very inspired playing Louisiana College football team, Coach, on their first time back. Yeah, when you can get that, that shot early, you get a defensive stop, and then you get the, you get the ball back and big play down the middle. really just energizes the whole team. You know, when th that's the, the idea behind deferring. When you win that toss and defer, you want to go out there, get a stop, and get your offense out there. A lot of times it doesn't work out, but this time it indeed worked to perfection. Switching things back over to the offensive side of it. Uh, Brandon Stevens in there at quarterback, bringing Stallones in motion once again. Going to be pulled out and run the option, trying to get back to the other side. The, the running back just blown up on that one, as was the entire play. And, Coach, the, the work and the play of – let me see who, who was back there doing that. Gerald Burton. Gerald Burton's job was the running back, and the uh, running back didn't get the ball, but he got blown up still. Yeah, when you defend option football, you've got a man for each guy, and he took care of his man and left the quarterback with no options. Literally. <laughs> Three-yard loss on the play. Second down and 13 pushes the Aggies back to the 18-yard line. Jones going back in motion. Now Stevens will take it and run up the middle. Gets back the lost yardage on the prior play, but it's still going to be third down and nine. Very spirited defense out there is being led by captain today, today's captain, Le Roderick Lyles. Interesting. I mean, they, they're, they're showing off a lot of quarterback runs. I wonder if LC had, the, had some film on him from the past or if this is a brand new game plan for them. Third down and nine, ten minutes to go. First quarter of play. Stevens looking over, sends Jones in motion. Back to pass again, looking down the field into the seam. That's Stallone, and it's wide open in the middle of that zone. Again, Coach, it looked like they switched from man back to a zone that time. They did. They're trying to keep him off balance. The quarterback did a good job of, of, of reading that defense and didn't repeat the same mistake he did on his first drive. As a quarterback, how about the precision on that one to, go, to drop it right in the middle of four defenders? It is. You've got to be, whenever you're throwing in zone coverage, you've got to be on time, and he was on time right there. First down and 10 from the Aggies' 42-yard line. Stevens with a crowded backfield this time. Has a couple of receivers stack, or running back stacked to the side. He gives it to Jones. Jones now finding some space up the middle, but is going to be brought down by Gerald Burton before things got out of hand. Yeah, they're still running that quarterback power read. It looks like it's like an outside sweep, but he's reading or there's an unblocked defender and they're reading him. Right now that defender's making him give the football. So we'll see if that, if that end adjusts any and see if he makes the quarterback keep it. And, and oddly, Coach, we talked about in the pregame that, that you said that they like to dink and dunk the ball down the field, throwing it and have maybe only seen one pass. Yeah, this is a total, This is a different game plan than what I was expecting coming in. 9-11 to go, first quarter play. Ball just outside the 50-yard line on the Wildcat side of the 49. Handoff goes to Jones up the middle. He's going to be hit, but going to grind his way up. They'll mark him just outside the 48-yard line or the 47, and it's going to be a first down for the Aggies. Yeah, good old classic uh, Alexandria senior high Trojan power play right there, so know a lot about that. <laughs> Indeed you do, 8.57 and counting. Wildcats strike early at 7 to nothing on that. It was an 82-yard pass from uh, James Powell to Micah Dunn, and it was pitch and catch. I think he threw it about 35 yards in the air, and Dunn went the distance. First down and 10 from the 47, man in motion, comes across to the near side. Now there are three on our side, one to the top of the field. Jones once again goes back out. They empty that backfield. Big pressure up the middle, swooping around. The Cats are going to get the sack. Cats will get the sack. That is big time coming up for the Wildcats, Ernest Simon. Wow. Yeah, not only are they playing man-to-man, -man, but they're playing man-to-man -man press. And so when you're trying to throw quick game and our defensive backs are jamming them, there's not nowhere to get the ball out quickly. And, uh, and the defensive line was able to get there before they could get off the man press. Loss of 10 on the play. Coach is going to make it second down and 20 all the way back to the 42-yard line. Aggies have it back on their side of the field. And... Uh, Leading rusher, Jamarian Jones for Oklahoma Panhandle State, unable to get on track in this one. Now they switch the side. Three receivers to the top of the field, one to the near side. Jones to the backfield. In the backfield, he gets it up the middle. He's going to get loose. 
get back all of the lost yardage and pick up another five. It's going to make it third down at five. 15 yard pickup for Jones out to the 44 yard line of Louisiana College. Yeah, this is this is where the game's uh, won and lost here. Third downs, you know, we'll see if uh, see how their third down game plan is on this third and a little bit longer than five. Severio would bring the blitz here. I can tell you that. 7:21 to go. First quarter play. Wildcats on top, seven to nothing, and there's going to be drawn offside. So free play for the Aggies trying to send his man downfield, and that's going to send. Oh, the quarterback out of the backfield, spinning around, gets hit hard. But all of that's going to be for naught. And depending on how far off he was, it's going to be third down and short now. Coach, it looks like maybe third down and two or three following the offsides. Yeah, I think the quarterback probably uh, missed an opportunity right there. You get that free play. You want to. Offside, defense number 95. That's a five yard penalty remains third down. You know, you'd like to, you know, as an offensive coordinator, you'd like to see him throw the ball up and give your, give your guy an opportunity to make a big play and decline the penalty. So luckily for Louisiana College that he didn't do that and we're able to hopefully here uh, uh, stop him on third and short. Third down and two from the 39-yard line of the Wildcats go the Aggies. Seven minutes to go first quarter of play. Wildcats with a 7 to nothing lead, but the Aggies are marching. Stevens trying once again, does the, the clap to, to check things out. And you've got two receivers stacked to the top, two receivers stacked to the near side. Jones in the backfield. Stallones is the lead receiver. He's been the primary target. Snap is back. Play action there. That is in and out of the hands. Hit him in the best possible spot right in the hands. That's Deshaun Brimage. And there's a penalty flag in the backfield. See what they're going to call a... Uh, Rough in the passer, perhaps, shot to the head, something along those lines. We'll go down on the field and check it out. Personal foul, rough in the passer, defense number 49. It's a 15-yard penalty, automatic, first down. Yeah, difficult call. That was Logan Brimmer that came in just aggressive and, and got to the quarterback just a tad too late, and that's tough. Yeah, you know uh, what Panhandle State's trying to do there by stacking those receivers. That's hard to play man to man when you right. got them stacked. So that's their way. They want to throw quick game. They're pressing us. Let's get them in stacked and try and, and got their guy open. They got what they wanted. Now they spread things out. You've got two to the top, two to the near side. Jones in the backfield with Stevens. First down and ten from the 24-yard line. Play action there, going into the end zone. Complete touchdown. That time he doesn't drop it. That was number five, Deshaun Brimage, that brings that one in, and that was a pretty pass and catch for the Aggies. Yeah, the cornerback uh, being in zone coverage that time, they're going back and forth, back and forth. But the one bad thing, if your eyes are inside, then you the guy may go right by you and you don't even see it. So they're able to really capitalize on the coverage right there and complete that ball over the top. Getting ready for the potential tying PAT. Snap is back, hold is down, kick is up, and it is good. Seven to seven, back in 60 on 104.3 The Bridge. 641 the first, we're tied up at seven. Back to live action here. Seven apiece in this one. 6.41 to go. First quarter of play. Getting set to kick this one off. Back deep to receive is Devin Briscoe, and the ball is angling right to him. He picks it up at the 11. Briscoe now 15, 20. 25, 30 goes Devin. Devin out to the 35. Cuts back in, but it's going to be stopped there. 35-yard line for Devin Briscoe, and that's where the Wildcats will have their second offensive set. 
Yeah, you know, you, you can't just rest on that last big play. As soon as that ball crossed the end zone, LC's offensive coordinator went scripting his next drive. So let's we'll see what he put together. And a great job uh, on offense this year. Coach Coach G has been there and, and do, does great things. Also does with their, their, their schooling, their, their tutoring, you know, those things. Education is real key. Just like it is over there with, with you guys at Ash, it's that way here. Yeah, it's, it's an... We're, we're growing men. We're growing young men. These They're growing, you know, 21, 22-year-old people. Powell back at quarterback shovels it out to Mark Kalen. And Mark Kalen, it's like uh, 24 was in the huddle when they called that play, and that was a big defensive stop by Jordan Hunter. Yeah, that's, that's probably the read on the quarterback right there. He's got he's to see that guy moving out and maybe tuck it and, and replace him right there. So. Uh, Milburn shaking up a little bit. He got hit right away and uh, coming off favoring favoring one of his legs. Going to hop off on his own. Now he's got to stop there. But, yeah, no, it's, you know, football is, uh, you know, we we try, obviously we keep teach and we coach the game, but, you know, we, we like to try to say there's such a bigger picture in this thing. We like to think we're, we're, we're making the next generation. You know, we talked a lot about that on the show last night, uh, just about how all of the coaches in this area, really, you see a lot of character. And what a great class of coaches from high school, the college, all of that around central Louisiana. Second down and 15 for the Wildcats. They're at their 31-yard line following that loss. Powell brings Leon in motion. Handoff goes to Briscoe. Briscoe spins around and is going to get four of the prior five yards lost back. That's going to make it third down and 11 from the 35. Yeah, the five-man front that Panhandle State's using right there, it really makes it hard for LC to block the linebackers. So it's going to be a, a test on if the linebackers can make open field tackles. Slot receivers are some speedy ones. Kenyon Leone is in the slot at the top. Micah Dunner, Zion Williams in the slot. Now Tay Cole moves his self, moves himself into the slot. And nobody moves like the ball was snapped a little bit too early, but gets passed out. And Williams steps out of bounds and then gets hit when he's out there. But that's going to bring up fourth down. And Coach, looked like the ball got back to Powell before anybody thought it was. Yeah, I'm not sure if, if that was on uh, the center or the quarterback or what happened. But that's unfortunate. You can't have those mistakes on third down. No, not at all. 5-19 to go here in a rapidly moving first quarter. Seven apiece in this one. Wildcats on a big 82-yard touchdown pass. And um, Oklahoma Panhandle with a, with a touchdown pass of their own. Hunter Martinson back to, correction, that's Weaver. Weaver back to punt. He's at the 25 puts a foot into this one and it is high and not going to go very far makes it way out of bounds and hits a lineman that is about five yards off the field of play not a great kick there by weaver needless to say panhandle state will take over first down and 10 from their 45 yard line yeah gonna need the defense to step up right here uh you know, field position such an ongoing battle and, and right now they they've got a little bit of momentum got a score and a stop and good field position so uh, need a big play right here Doug Gann and Ben McLaughlin bringing you Louisiana College football here. Thankful all of you guys that are listening or following along on the award-winning Louisiana College Convergence media there and, and listening around the world. Seven apiece here, 450 to go. A little inside shovel pass, I guess, if you will. That is complete to number six, Charge Hunt. And, Coach, in the, the old days, they used, and I say it's not been that long ago, they would – hand the ball off to the guy coming through, but now they went more to that little shovel, and the reason behind that is simple. Hey, we're offensive coordinators, former quarterbacks, we want passing yards. That's what, no, it, it makes it easy, it makes it safer. If you drop that football, it's an incomplete pass, it's not a fumble. <laughs> Get the difference, quarterbacks like that's passing yards for me. No, that's not what we wanted. We wanted the incomplete side of it, but yes, I love the way you think. Two to the top, one to the near side, H back is in there. He switches sides. Jones back there with Stevens now moving over again. Handoff goes up the middle. Jones following that big H back. And, and look, good job stepping up into the hole for the Wildcats that time. We'll let him turn and get his jersey number of who it was. The, the unsung hero of that play is our defensive end. They're trying to kick him out and get inside, and he squeezed and made that ball slow bounce out and let our defense speed run it down. That's a really good job by him. That's third down and six. Looked like Austin, yeah, Austin King for the Wildcats coming up making that stop. We'll have to see. Yep, that was number 22. So 
Austin King, freshman defensive back out of Minden in there. Third down and five. Three and a half to go here. First quarter plays, slings this one out over the middle. And tremendous, tremendous coverage out there by Tyron Young. The, uh, the Aggies looking for a penalty, but what a great job of coverage by Tyron Young. Oh, great man-to-man, -man. third down and in, in, in six right there, man-to-man -man coverage, and that's what you run it for, to keep that in no space when you and the receiver. Well, the Wildcat defense does their job. That'll send Franklin and Micah Dunn, Mikhail Franklin, Mikhail Franklin back to the team. In. He's nearest the A in Wildcats on the, the LC side of it. And Williams, mm -mm. and that ball is snapped over the head of the punter, having to chase it around. The Wildcats are back there, and it's going to be down. The Wildcats get a big, big break. They'll fall on it down at the 24-yard line of the Aggies, and that's a big-time break, Coach. There it is. You know, now as the offensive coordinator, this is you, – you got a good shot play, a good red zone shot play. This is the time to bring it out. Man. Special teams playing big in this one. The punt from LC wasn't a big one, but the defense was able to hold. And then that snap, as we've all seen, sells over the head of the punter, and that's difficult to do anything. Did the right thing by falling on it. No doubt. Don't don't let them get an easy six. Make them earn it. They got you know balls on the 24 going in. Make them earn this touchdown. 313 to go. The Wildcats start this drive at the Aggies 24-yard line. LCPA announcer Randy James getting that Wildcat crowd stirred up as he always does. Powell looking over, calls for the ball. That's going to go to Briscoe. Briscoe is going to find tough sledding in the middle. We'll get maybe a yard or two on the play before he is stopped. Yeah, came out in a 21 personnel heavy set right there and, and seeing what their adjustments. First time I've seen them in that. So now you can see what they're in and they can see how they're going to attack it. 21, not a 12, right? Not a 12. Semantics. <laughs> right. <laughs> Had that interesting discussion <laughs> on, the, on the trip down there as well. Two tight ends, one back is what uh, the reference is there. They count it that way. So your, your tight end being that first number in the back is that back number that he went with Powell. Now at second and nine, a lot of Washington Redskin tile, uh, style motion. Powell fakes the handoff and or fakes the pitch and just keeps it up at the middle. I guess it's the Washington football team mo type motion now is what that is. Yeah, we'll see what they are here in, a, I guess, the next year or two. <laughs> right. Just a couple of drives in. And, Coach, not taking that shot that you had, you had talked about when you get it deep down in the, the, the field. You know, he probably had scripted on this drive. He wanted to get in that heavy personnel set and see what they had. Looks like an offsides penalty. They're blowing that one dead. A little uh, practice pitch and, and catch from Powell to – Leon, and we'll see what the official judgment is. We need this to be offsides. Offside, defense into the neutral zone, calls a reaction by the offense. It's five yard penalty remains, third down. Now that'll make a big change to your play calling. You know, when you get down in this red zone, we talked about being a difficult place to be, but third and eight versus third and three is huge. No, no doubt, you know, uh, in your, probably in your field goal kicker's range right here, so. Powell's got a snap again. Not much movement on the offensive line. This ball going into the end zone, jumping up. Came to Leon incomplete, but uh, going to be offsides once again, and that's going to be the Wildcats a first down, I do believe. Going down to the official, and we'll get the side defense. It's a five-yard penalty. Result of that five-yard penalty is for. So, Coach, you go from third and eight to first and goal following two, or just not first and goal, first and ten from the 12. But uh, you don't mind getting those yards that way if no, you're the offense. We're not in the charity work right here. We'll, you know, we're, we'll, we'll take everything we can get. A minute and a half to go in the first quarter of play. Clock is stopping. They're going to talk about this just a moment. It's seven to seven in this when the Wildcats strike on the second possession of the game, second play of that possession. Please place 148 on the game clock. 148, please. Resetting the game clock. On the first offsides, our lineman, when they entered it, he kind of jumped up. I was glad to see the second one. He stayed down so we could get that free playoff and had a chance for a touchdown. So a good adjustment by the old line to stay in there and hold their water. James Powell in at quarterback. He's got Briscoe flanked to the left. Darvon off to the right in the H form, H back set. And there's goes Briscoe following that big offensive line. But uh, coming out of the, the backfield of Oklahoma Panhandle was number 25, Daquan Charles, coming up and making that stop. And looks like a penalty flag comes in at the five. 
Love seeing the, the, those those big linemen on those pin and pull schemes where you get them looping around. It makes it really fun for those backs to cut in behind them. Just uh, saw Daquan come over the top that time and uh, hopping over the offensive line. Coming up, making that stop. We'll see what the... After the play was over, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, defense number 11. That's half the distance to the goal, automatic first down. Kobe Jeter, one of the captains for this Aggies team. Coach, and so a half the distance and two penalties. This has got to drive you crazy if uh, if your head coach, Bob Majeski of that uh, Aggies team. Definitely saw Logan Brimmer come in, so we've got some kind of package going on right here. Big, heavy offense is out there. You've got, again, look back there in the backfield. It's Micah Dunn. Micah Dunn is at quarterback. He scored last week on this. This time he hands it to Briscoe. Briscoe trying to get to the outside. Bang it around. Briscoe's going to get there. Touchdown, LC. Touchdown, Devin Briscoe. Yeah, interesting right there. You know, watched these guys play uh, all year long, and that was a, that was a unique patch to bring in the defensive line. Just get your most aggressive players on your whole team on the field at once and go attack them. That's a nice job. And we saw last week in the game when Micah Dunn came in at quarterback, scored the only touchdown for the Wildcats out of that position. This time, you, you got to believe that they're saying, okay, he's in at quarterback. He's going to run the ball. Well, he hands it off to Briscoe, and Briscoe houses it from six yards out. Taking the 13 to seven lead, Hunter Martinson looking for the PAT. Snap is back, hold down, kick is up, and it is good. Back in 60 on 104.3 the bridge. Good. the first. Oklahoma Panhandle seven. Your Louisiana Crown Cats 13. Hey, this is Dave Edwards inviting you to the arrival. It's a Bible study for young adults for the campus, for the Sin Law area. We look forward to seeing you there. Hey, I'm Anna, and I'm a Wildcat Navigator. Hey, We are back to Louisiana College. The Wildcats put up 14 big points in the first quarter and uh, lead 14 to 7 in this one. Martinson teeing things up. And Coach, what do you, I know you've called games from this, but the, the stress and focus isn't on really on you to, to call another play as this kick is up and it is making its way to Stallone's. He's going to let it go into the end zone. But uh, just curious, your thoughts of it's a little bit more stress free down here with the headset on. Yeah, it is. It is. It's different, you know, it's uh, but it's fun and now. As a fan, that fan stress comes in too here as well. As I'm pulling for these guys as hard as anybody in the stadium. So uh, let's see if we can get a stop right here. Well, there you, there you have that Wildcat defense getting in there. And again, back at the safety spot for Louisiana College is Austin King. And it's the first time we've really seen him as much this year. He's flanked over there to Mario Weathersby. I don't see Cole in the, in the defensive backfield. He's been the lead tackler for the Wildcats. Another freshman, season. as you were saying. Look, the, the future is so bright for these Wildcats. Stevens in there, quarterback. He's got Jones flanked to the right. Three receivers to the top, one to the near side. And that is blown up. The quarterback is able to pull that one back. But uh, my goodness, coming off of the end, coach was was number 40, and that's LaRodrick Lyles, who has had a super day already. They keep going back to this power read, and so what else it said is, okay, if you're going to read me, well, we're going to take that guy and run right at you and make you make that decision as hard as possible. So a great job by him of meeting that mesh point and blowing it up on the handoff. Look, that's got to be frustrating when it's, it's quarterback, it's running back, it's ball, and it's defender right away. Second down and 14. Handoff goes to Jones. No, the quarterback's going to pull and keep this one. Jackson Hetzler's chasing him down. He's going to get him from behind. 25-yard line is where they go. So a four 
yard pickup, but Jackson Hetzler not going for the fake and being able to track him down. And that's great when your defensive end can track down your running quarterback. That's no doubt. He squeezed it to make, squeezed it initially to make the quarterback pull it and is athletic enough to come back out and make the tackle. That's an awesome job. Third down and 10. Panhandle does not have to snap the ball if they don't want to, as there's 19 on the play clock. They may try to take advantage of one more play down to seven on the game clock. Back to pass is Stevens. He gets that one complete out, in the, but the Salones is out there receiving it. It just goes to the ground. That's going to do it. First quarter of play, Wildcats on top, 14 to seven, back in 60 seconds on 104.3 The Bridge. Back to Louisiana College while we were away. In the middle of it, here comes the punt. That's, that's and a fair a catch was called for. And uh, Mikhail Franklin was Franklin. calling for the Wildcats. fair catch. And then he Number wanted to 12, run. Lucky, luckily, they avoided the penalty. And what's the rule behind that, Coach? Yeah, once you call a fair catch, if you catch it and take off running, they're going to throw a flag because as the kicking team, you see that fair catch, you stop. And so they're, they're trying to keep that. But I guess they didn't uh, – didn't see or didn't think it was enough of a of a football move to throw that flag. Well, did a good job of blowing the the whistle and not letting things go. The Wildcats have scored on their last possession, moving down, looking to do that. They start this one at the 42-yard line. Handoff goes to Briscoe up the middle. Briscoe is going to pick up five on the play, make it second down and five to the 47. Yeah, good counter play right there. They've been running a lot of zone across, and he came across and put his foot in the ground and came back to where he was at originally and, uh, and threw that, those linebackers off. Looking at the receivers to the near side is Raul Aranda. Good to see him in the game there. And uh, just a, one of the great possession type receivers for this Louisiana College squad. James Powell in there at quarterback is gonna go the distance, two receivers stacked. Last time we saw that, they went to the house with it. Handoff though, this time goes to Briscoe. He's gonna spin around, not get really a, a, anything, maybe a yard, yard and a half out of it. Look, we tell our running backs, you know, sometimes one yard gain is a good football play. And so they're, they're at third and in, in short to medium. And so they're in a good spot here to convert. Take Cole to the top, or correction, that may be Glenn White that's up there if that's 18. And then into the slot goes Leon. Briscoe going the way as we saw Mar Mark Kalen Milburn. It came out on one of the earlier plays. Darbone moving just a bit from the H-back position, centers himself right behind that left tackle. Powell hurrying to the line as now it's under 10 and 9 on the play clock, down to 5. James calls for the ball and just gets the blitz comes in and blows James Powell up that time loss of five on the play. Yeah, they're they're, they're running a, a run scheme to the left and they brought that extra guy off the right side and that slow developing quarterback run. He got there right on him. So it's just one of those things. Sometimes the defense has a, the perfect call against what you have and and uh, give them, you know, tip your hat and, and go to the next series. The way that that James was looking over and taking so much time it looked like he saw that that blitz was coming and he was thinking in his mind, what am I going to do here? Yeah, not sure what his out was. If he, Maybe he should have checked a play or checked the other direction. But uh, anyways, you come over here, you regroup, and you get ready for the next one. In to punt are the Wildcats. Weaver puts a foot into this one. And uh, actually, that's that's what we saw early in, in warm-ups out there, Coach, and that is number 82 that was on to punt for the Wildcats, and that's Brandon Huffman that's out there doing the punting for the Wildcats today. 
Yeah, I mean, I don't know. It looks like it may be a little half rugby little. I mean, you know, I don't know if they're maybe setting up a fake or something later on, but definitely get an athlete back there and uh, uh, maybe give a little bit of more options for you. On the punt Normally game. it's 46 Jacob Weaver, and we see him just uh, off to the side. And so uh, not sure about that one, but did a good job. The four, of course, the first punt that we saw in practice from Huffman went five yards, but went about 25 up into the stands the way he kicked it, settled in after that and started hitting some pretty good punts. Aggies have it first down and 10 from the 26-yard line, 12.41 to go until halftime. Wildcats on top, 14-7. to seven. Jones gets the ball, goes right up the middle and going to be brought down by the Wildcats, number 42, Keelan what was Keelan's last name, Coach? I'm not going to try. <laughs> Keelan. Keelan Bougier gets him, and it's uh, tempo again from Oklahoma State, the Oklahoma Panhandle State University. Jones right up the middle, twisting around. It's going to be stopped a yard shy of the first down. Yeah, just running a, what we call a zone run where all the linemen work in the same direction and then the back can cut any way. So uh, trying to do a zone scheme and let the running back just make what, see whatever hole he can seize from the front side of the back side. Running back on those last two plays was Malik Hamilton. Hamilton in there for Jones on those two carries. Stevens has went the distance at quarterback. Two receivers to the top, one to the near side. Hamilton still remains in there with Stevens. Stevens calls for the ball. Hamilton's got it once again. A little bit quicker to the hole, it seems like, Coach. He is and picks up the first down after gaining two. Yeah, Malik was a really good football player out of Kilgore High School when I was at LC. I made a couple trips up. He was high on our board and, and recruiting him and, and wasn't able to get him. But uh, glad to see that he's still playing football and, and, and out there competing. It's got to be pretty cool to come back into the booth just a couple of years removed from where you were recruiting and see these players that, uh, that you got to know and got to recruit. First down and 10 for the Aggies from their own 38-yard line. Play action there. Stevens back to pass, trying to go over the top. And, uh, and that is complete in and out of the hands, incomplete. And I'm going to tell you, that was fantastic coverage back by the Wildcats, number 21, Benny Clark the third. And, Coach, that's not giving up on it, but that was a beautiful pass, beautiful catch. This time, Benny just kept his arm in there the whole time and fought through until the ball hit the ground. Yeah, beautiful pass. It's not a catch until he completes it, and that's what Benny did a good job of is fighting for it all the way to the ground and got it out. That's something they work on in man coverage every single day, and it's awesome to see him put and carry what they do in practice right over into a game. We saw, we saw it earlier when the receiver made that catch, and you said just sometimes the offense catches the ball, sometimes the defense makes the play. This time it was the other way around. Stevens calling for the ball. Hamilton's got it again. Again, he's slipping around, not going to get anywhere. Great, great pressure that time by the Wildcats, number 49, Logan Bremer. Logan been uh, effective on both sides of the ball and, uh, and and even captaining. So a great job by Logan Bremer. Yeah, and going back to that last play, if you're going to play a lot of man-to-man, -man, you, you're going to have to live with giving up a couple plays because you, 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 you can't get scared. and They've got to have short memories and come right back because – as the offense, it's, it's frustrating to just keep throwing those deep balls. You get tired of doing that against man coverage, and uh, hopefully we can keep covering them up. Good matchup to the near side. Brimage is there against Brandon Isaac. Brimage had the big catch earlier for the touchdown, and that's where Stevens is going. Shakes loose, and Brimage just in and out of his hands. The second drop of the day by Brimage, and you saw that matchup developing right from the line of scrimmage. Yeah, not, not a great football by the quarterback. You get that man, we call it cover zero. That means there's nobody deep. Everybody's man on the line of scrimmage. When you when that receiver wins, he's got to put the ball up with air and let the, run, let the receiver run underneath it. So I bet he's going to wish he had that one back. Good to see uh, the, the feistiness out of that LC defense. Uh, Michael Latin just very spirited coming off of the field there. Fourth down and 10 from the 37-yard line. Back deep to receive again is Mikhail Franklin. Also back there is Micah Dunn. Dunn gets this at the 20, now Dunn to the 25, 30. Going to be pushed out of bounds, but not before getting to the 35-yard line. And that's where the Wildcats will take over 10:45 to go until halftime, 14-7. LC's got the lead. We'll see Wildcats able to come out here and, and ineffective on their last drive. But I'm telling you, Coach, it's been a different it, – it, the first two games of the season when they played Sagu and they played Northern uh, American University, 
this is the intensity that they played with, and it's great to see that today. There's no doubt, and success breeds more success, so hopefully that both sides can feed off each other right here. Two stacked receivers to the near side again. Powell in the backfield with Mark Kalen, or Devin Briscoe. Play action to Briscoe. Powell escapes the sack, and now he's running. He's to the 45, cuts inside at the 50 into Aggie territory down to the 44-yard line. The other negative thing, though, about man coverage is if you lose contain on the quarterback, there's nobody left in the secondary with eyes in the backfield. Back-to-back -back plays. Now, one was a series ago, one was this one, that they're bringing pressure right up the middle. This time, Powell was able to sidestep it. He did a great job of using his pocket movement and, and, and made the defense pay. Powell hurries to the line of scrimmage. Two to the top, one to the near side. Darbone in there at the H-back. Powell surveying the situation. He stands at the 50. Handoff goes to Briscoe. Briscoe slips a tackle at the line of scrimmage. Sidesteps, hops over somebody, driven out of bounds at the 35-yard line. Very near a first. They'll give him the 37, 36, so it's going to be a yard shy of a first. Watch out right here. This is the offensive coordinator's dream. Second and two or less. This is the time to take a shot. You got two downs. Hey, we're right, we're, we, may have, we may have three downs right here. You got three right here. So this is a really good opportunity to take a shot if they decide to go that way. Sometimes, though, you just want to get your first down and keep going because you're running the ball. Look, this is right up my alley, being in the booth with an offensive coordinator that likes to go down the field. Powell looking over that Aggie defense. He's got two to the top, one to the near side. Handoff, though, goes to Briscoe. Briscoe's going to be stopped in the backfield. Great job of pressure up the middle by the uh, Aggies number 11, Kobe Jeter. No, that was, a, that was a good run blitz they had right there. It came off the edge, and good thing is, still third and short. Third down and three, not a bad place to be. Take Cole at the top of the field along with Zion Williams. Micah Dunn to the near side in man coverage. That is always a mismatch. Powell looking over the offense. Micah Dunn with no safety over the top, Coach, one-on-one -on -one coverage. You, I think there's an opportunity to go down the field there. It looks like there's going to be a little RPO with a, with a slam on the backside. Handoff goes right up the middle. Briscoe spinning around. Had an opportunity to get it, but number four, Jaquavion Daniels comes up and stops that. And now you go from second and two, Coach, to, to fourth and two. That's why, you know, sometimes uh, it's good to take a shot on one of those to really loosen up the defense. But, again, we've got a fourth and two right here. Need to convert. Coming into the game now for the Wildcats, number 47. And I don't, uh, I don't see 47. These uh, new new jerseys will have to, there he is, Hayden Pruitt. Hayden Pruitt is in there, freshman defensive lineman to give a little bit extra blocking. Powell calls for the ball, handoff goes to Briscoe once again, and he slipped out of that. That is all Devin Briscoe. That is all Devin Briscoe as he slips out of another run blitz to get the first down. We tell our running backs, the first guy is your guy. The first guy to approach you—that is your guy. Everybody else, so if you make the first guy miss, then everybody else is uh, is on them. So he did that, made that first guy miss, and was able to find a hole. You know, you made a comment on the Thursday night show: is that you don't have to do a lot of jobs; you just have to do your job, and things will be successful. Two receivers to the top, one in the near side. 14-7. Wildcats with the lead. Eight minutes until the halftime. New running back in there for the Cats is is Brown. Handoff. No play action. Now this time looking for. Looking for Zion out in the flat and connects there. Good throw by Powell. Yeah, we only first down four yards. If we get four yards on first down, we feel like we've won. And now they're in second and five. The playbook really opens up now. Second down and five indeed. Zion goes out and stacks with Tay Cole to the near side. And just, I'm telling you, on an island is Micah Dunn with defensive back number nine, Antonio Vaughn. It looks like some just, just wide open drills there. Powell hands the ball off, though. That is Cameron Brown. Cameron banging his way around. Gets to the 25-yard line. May pick up a yard. Another grab. That is not in the stat book. He could have tried to make a bigger play and bounced it out. He took what they gave him. He got a half a yard, and that was a great run because that's all he had right there. So now we still have third and medium, and we can get this converted. 6.57 to go until halftime. 14-7 Wildcats have the lead, and they are on the 25-yard line. Nose of the football at the 25 as you're heading to English Village. Powell's got uh, Briscoe back in the backfield with him. H-back is Darbone running the option. Late pitch to Briscoe, but uh, sniffed out well was that option 
by the Aggies. Yeah, the safety playing man coverage. He has he was a little bit freed up right there to come attack that run as opposed to being in zone and being deeper and having to cover the the pass. So being a man coverage, he was able to trigger early and, and make that play. Looks like the Wildcats are going to stay out there on offense. Fourth down and five from the 26 yard line. Two to the top, one in the near side. Now you bring in Zion in motion. He goes back to where he was, perhaps trying to get Oklahoma Panhandle State to jump off. They're still 10 and nine on the play clock. 6.37 on the game clock, down to four, down to three, and a timeout by Maddox and that Wildcat offense. Timeout. Louisiana. And there's the, the beauty of having the official mic, and, and that's a good point that Coach Maddox made. <laughs> He's made, you know. I felt like we, he was in the booth right here beside we, us. <laughs> we can't take the timeouts with us, so let, let's talk about it and, and get things going. You'd rather be prepared for this. Uh, and, and so a good job of Coach Maddox getting that timeout. There's no doubt. You know, when you script as, a, you know, as an offensive coordinator, you've got certain, you know, fourth down plays, and so they probably have one or two because you don't get very many of those. One, eight. You don't get very many fourth down opportunities in a game, so you only have one or two. Like, okay, if we get that situation, this is it. So might as well call the timeout. Let's make sure we get it the, the exact look we want uh, to get this converted. How many times have you seen a team that was out there to go for it, call that timeout, and then end up going for the field goal? You know, it, that's probably more of a field thing from the head coach. So I... So as the coordinator, I'm like, I'll just say, hey, I've got, I've got a good play. That's, uh, that's your call, though. I've got a play if you want it, but it's your call, Coach. Well, offensive coordinator, Coach G, wins out. There's two receivers at the top, one of the near side. Colin Briscoe back out there. Look for that little inside slant, perhaps. This time, no, going over, that's the play that we talked about a lot, and that's going to be complete in the end zone. Touchdown, Wildcats. Touchdown, Micah Dunn uh, from Brandon Powell, from James Powell. Yeah, you, they're staying in that man coverage, and so you just, you've got to be able to win one-on-ones. You can't throw hitches. You can't throw little quick routes. They're genius, so you've got to say it's, they're, they're challenging us. we got to go win that battle, and uh, they, they went after Micah, the veteran receiver, and he's able to win. And that play, that's what we had talked about earlier. From the hash over, it is Micah Dunn and his defender is all that's in that, and you've got to, you really have to like Micah Dunn in that situation. There's no doubt he's, you know, he, he's, he is obviously fast, and is, but, but he is so rangy. And so he really gives the quarterback a, a comfortable throw because, you know, you can really leave it outside away from that defender. And so that's what he was able to give that, that, that good window and that good throw. And James threw a great football. And you know the hands that Dunn has. He's out there as the holder. The snap is back, kick is up, and it is a penalty. So we're going to keep it right here. Penalty flag flies in. The only thing you can possibly think is an offsides. 6.15 to go. Illegal formation, five in the backfield on the offense. It's five yard penalty, re kick. So what happens there, just the end in the backfield? Yeah, they, they must, the, the tight end must have been off the line of scrimmage and so you gotta have a minimum number on the line of scrimmage. So um, he must have been backed off. He just gotta declare and make sure he looks out and make sure that the, the official has him as on the line of scrimmage. And you just don't uh, expect that on an extra point, but just shows you everything has got to be so defined out there. So they'll back it up five, trying this PAT attempt again. Hunter Martinson out there, out of the hold of Dunn. Snap is back, hold is down, kick is up, and it is good. Back after this on 104.3 The Bridge. 615 in the second. Oklahoma Pan handles seven.
And we're back to live action here. LC gets the kickoff. That is Martinson and is back to the 20, 25, 30 now brought down. Going to be first and 10 for the Aggies out to the 33 yard line. Back and going. Sorry, we had stepped away just a moment. 21 to 7 here. You got to, uh, the, the Cats have not been really putting up a lot of points this year. And again, you said it too. They probably had the worst first half draw on scheduling of any team that's out there. There's no doubt. So it's uh, really, really enjoyed seeing this. Uh, these guys start off hot and let's hope to see the momentum carry over. First down and 10, 6.09 to go until halftime. A handoff goes to. That is Jones back in there, I do believe. Yeah, Jamalri and Jones. So it was good seeing Malik Hamilton out there uh, just for a bit to get you some old memories back. Yeah, like I said, we were mentioned earlier, it is nice. It's nice to see because when you recruit players, obviously you want them to go to you, but you, you can only take so many of them. So you, you want to see them go and be successful and get an education. That's nice to see him still playing. Brandon Stevens, the freshman quarterback who has been out there the entire way, looks at second down and 10. Play action to Jones. No, Jones gets it. Jones getting to the outside. Good run, 25, 35, 40. Driven out of bounds at the 42. Comes back in and, uh, and and is fired up himself and ready to go. Yeah, another one of those power reads where they're reading that defensive end. And on that one, he, he slow played it, which allowed that running back to get outside. So look, look to see Micah or LaRodrick right there attack that thing and like he did uh, the drive before. 5.20 until halftime. 49-yard line is where the Aggies go first and 10. Handoff very late, but is to Jones and uh, nowhere to go. And, and Stevens was reading as long as he could, Coach, but there was just a bevy of orange jerseys coming his way. But just, I mean, right there, I, b I believe that was uh, that was number 49. He, did, he, he attacked it, and it makes the quarterback uncomfortable, and that read does not become clean. So that was a great job there, again, doing something different from the previous play and, and putting pressure on the quarterback. You know, we've called Logan Brimer's name a, a lot. Logan Brimer there, number 49, has, has made some big-time plays. Playing behind the chains. Now, you talked about second and two, second and three, second and five are, are manageable. Now you get second and 11. It's a whole page different on your play calling. Yeah, well, you want to get half of it back. That's the, that's the second down game plan. Stevens has Hamilton back in the backfield with him. Hamilton now cutting to the outside, 50, 45, 40 goes Hamilton. He's going to get not only half of it back, Coach, but he gets all of it. Looks over to the Wildcat sideline and nods his head like, yeah, I got this. A smart call by the by their offensive coordinator again. Second and 11, you maybe oh, we got to throw it. No, no, no. You, you just need to try to get five or six of them back, make it third manageable. What happens is the defense may be playing more pass, and they were able to pop a run right there. So a smart play by their play caller. Three receivers to the top of the field, one to the near side. Malik Hamilton in the backfield with Stevens. Stevens surveying that defense, calls for the ball. Gets it off to Malik. Malik trying to get to the outside. A good little stutter step to the 40-35. And there's going to be a holding penalty that will bring this back, we do believe. That's Hamilton again around the right side for the Penalty came in from the back side of the field, Coach, and that usually only means holding. Yeah, those though, when you hand the ball off on the outside on the power read, that's a long time for those receivers to block. And it's just it's hard to do. And so you'll that's where you know we Thursday night we had a couple of those holdings on those outside runs. So it's just tough. Willie McCline coming in at running back. He takes the place of Jones now. Jamarian Jones going out. There is no foul. So they, they wave the penalty off, and uh, that's interesting. When, when one gets waved off, it's like, well, you sure you saw what you saw? I can just imagine if that was uh, Coach Bachman on the sideline, <laughs> what's going to be said right there. You throw that flag and you go pick it up. So. What do you mean? Unless, it, unless uh, the Trojans were on offense. Well, sure, of course. 21-7 to 7 here as the first half is winding down, 353 and counting. The Aggies looking to get this thing a touchdown closer, and they do get the ball to come out in the second. Harry, correction, the Wildcats will get it. Going down the field to Brimage, that is in and out of the hands, and not necessarily where the other two that he dropped were, but you can see that that is probably his favorite target is Deshaun Brimage, the sophomore receiver out of Akron, Ohio. Mm, yep, Akron, Ohio, uh, LeBron James from all that area up there. So All the way down to Goodwill, Oklahoma. It's a long train ride. Goodness gracious, it is 340 to go until halftime. You see Jones back in there now at running back. 
Third and two from the 34-yard line of the Wildcats. Three to the near side. Wildcats showing, showing pressure. Look like they're going to come after Stevens. Jones now out. A little swing pass. That's behind him. That's on the ground. That ball can be recovered. Picked. Oh, they're calling it incomplete. But, Coach, that looked a little bit behind the quarterback. It did. I think we got away with one, too. They, they're playing man again. And when they put that running back in motion, there was a linebacker trying to get there. And he was a step behind. If that had been an accurate pass, we might have been out leveraged here on the edge. So, very fortunate for us for that ball to fall incomplete. Coach Maddox not thinking that way. He was, he was like, look, that was back there. But seeing this angle up here brings a fresh – perspective to it checking back in number 29 willie mccline as the aggies now will go for it watch that hard count from stevens he likes to try to draw this lc defense off sprinting the man out now a quick little slant is there great coverage on the outside by the wildcats number 21 benny clark and coach if you've got an early MVP on defense. Benny Clark has been on just about every single play. If I'm the quarterback and I'm seeing man coverage, I know what guy I'm not trying to attack right there. That's for sure. You're not going to run a quick anything nope. to Benny Clark's way. Wow. Goodness gracious. Wildcats get the turnover on downs. <coughs> and coach, this is one of those opportunities with three and a half to go. Getting the football back, you like to go out there and try to Belichick it one time. Get you one before the half and, and come back out and do it again. Powell looking to the sideline. He's got Caden Lee on in there at running back this time, I do believe. The six and the six eight and are the very, eight. very close. I do know Open that eight. that to the near side is Micah Dunn. He's back there with Jalen Watkins. And Powell's gonna keep this keep this himself. Yeah, with you know, with three minutes and twenty seconds, you're you're caught in between. You 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 know, you want to hold the ball till the end, but you also want to score. So you got to play that balancing game. You don't want to score too quick and give them two minutes, but you also you want to score. So you got to find a way to get a couple first downs and then see where we're at. The last drive last week was so important in the game for the Wildcats. They drove down the field, had a field goal opportunity, unfortunately blocked and. The scoop and score did it. Zion Williams comes in motion, now settles in at the slot to the far side. Powell facing pressure. That one is going to be picked off by the Aggies. Looking to see if he was out. And, no, that brings the, that'll bring the defense. And so that's what you wanted to avoid was that, uh, that, that turnover. But, Coach, Powell was under pressure all the way back. Yeah, pressure leads to leads to uh, bad decisions, leads to inaccurate throws. So, you know, uh, I'd like to see him later on feel that pressure, find your check down, get rid of the football. You know, sometimes taking a sack is the best play. We talk about, you know, that not every play has to be a big play. Well, you, you look at <clears throat> pass completion percentages and turnover percentages when a quarterback throws off his back foot. I got to believe the pass completion is very low 251 to go until halftime play action stevens going for all of it right here got a man and it is down to the seven and what a uh, what a great pass out there to number seven jay sean brown right in front of benny clark and benny looks like he's just uh look like he's shaking up a little bit but hops up they're going after Benny every time. What Coach. I love about him is he got up and he went right back because he said, okay, I'm going to play man again. Can you, can you do it again? So that's what, that's, that's what you want to see out of a press man cornerback. This time Ryan Acosta is out there at the wide out opposite of Benny. Handoff up the middle, getting to the near side, down to the two-yard line. That is number 34, Jamarian Jones. If they're smart, they run as much of this clock off. You want to take this down as much as you can. Take all 30 seconds off right here, you know. Just not giving any chance at a kickoff return or anything out there. That's right. If you're the offensive coordinator, you know, obviously you want to hold them. But if it's going to be a score, you want some time. Jones has it once again. Jones just has to one man to outrun. Cuts back to the inside. Touchdown for the Aggies. Two-yard touchdown runs. Jamarian Jones and it gets it to within one score right before the half. 
every player on offense has to be looking to say they gave us too much time. That's the mindset of an offensive player. Neil, okay, you, you got yours. You gave us a minute and 49. We're going to go back and get it right back. So the difference here, though, is your offense is not over watching the huddle of the sky coach because it can't do that over here. It's a, that, it is a lot different. You've got to really rely on your um, – your coaching staff and the players to get that info. Extra point up and good. 21-14 back in 60 on 104.3 The Bridge. Back to Louisiana College getting ready to kick things off. The Aggies of Oklahoma Panhandle State put this ball into the air, and it is Mikhail Franklin that's got it. And Mikhail's going up to the middle. He's to the 35, 40, 45, 50, 45, 40. Now down to the 30, 20, 10. Mikhail Franklin, touchdown, Wildcats. Touchdown, Mikhail Franklin. 85 yards on the kickoff return, Coach. And tell me again why you want to wind the clock all the way down and take time off. Can you tell me that one more time? There's no doubt. Now, if I'm on their sideline, I'm like, we just scored. Let's go score again. <laughs> so, you know, but you never want to. I'll take points every time you can get them. Look, I'm telling you, Mikhail Franklin, the freshman wide receiver out of Addis, Louisiana, goes 5'11", 175, and took all of it so close and did a great job of tiptoeing down the sideline as well. Hunter Martinson on to stretch this back out. Goodness gracious. Snap is back. Kick is up. And 28-14. We're going to keep it right here as a uh, wow coach and uh, – how about that? Well, you know, I was going to say, I don't know. I've, between from Ash, Abel always getting touchbacks, and then their team never kicking it to Jarvis. I never see a true kickoff return anymore, so I, I feel like I haven't seen this part of football in, in quite some time. <laughs> Look, uh, Abel Peterman, if, if he's not kicking somewhere uh, prominent on Sunday, somebody is missing out because just booms. About, and, and such a not – a, a huge stature when he gets some some more weight on him some more that technique some more i mean his future is so bright because he just pounds a football but uh, you, you're right what a weapon is have to have somebody that puts it in the end zone because that never happens then it's tough you know they they get they kick five yards deeper than what we do and then you can return it from the end zone too where in high school you can't so uh uh, but that was awesome. That was a great kickoff return by Louisiana College. And um, now you just tell your cover team, don't let them, you know, they're, they're trying to repeat it right here. So hopefully we can go down and cover and, and make them earn uh, any points they get here in the last part of the first half. Another one of those freshmen just making such a huge impact, Mikhail Franklin out of Addis, Louisiana. Switching. 136. Oh, see, I see what they did there. Good job. They're uh, setting up one way, and that's number 84, Stallone. Switches places with 29 and going oh, and bangs yeah. this one. That's tough. He's got to bring it out. Coming up in that Wildcat special teams play, Coach. Special teams, mark that down in your book. The big kickoff return, and then the indecisiveness by Willie McCline, who he and Stallone's had McCline. switched places. In order to, because they were kicking away from McClines. That ball's two or three yards outside, runs him back momentum wise into the end zone, and your first thought is a touchback. But no. Yeah, no, I don't know if they if that was a kick longer than normal, but neither returner was, was that deep. They were both heels at the ten, so that's tough to go back and catch that ball in the two and come out. Coming up at and, and this is the magic of production and technology. Coming up at the half, 
we've got a halftime report straight off the Carnival Cruise Line and my man Rich Dupree, always working. I'm sure he is out there. I'm sure he's working <laughs> real hard. But. Minute and a half to go. It'll be great to hear from Rich. That will be our halftime segment. It is 28 to 14 here. The Wildcats have the lead in this one. Just an electrifying last couple of possessions. From the 10, Gus Stevens. He's looking over the middle, and that ball almost in, intercepted. Pass intended for number 82, Jalen Partita was looking for it. And that's still man coverage, but it's a different type of man. They're playing man, but they still have two safeties playing deep zone. They call that cover two man under, so it's a, you still get that man pressure, but now you've got two guys looking at the quarterback, so they don't give up that big play. As an offensive coordinator coach here, you, you miss fire on that one a minute and a half. You don't want to give up something that uh, that just puts you further behind. Are you trying to be a little cautious, or are you going after it? You know, a draw, a screen is a good play right here. Quarterback draw is played. There you go. See, great so minds. If you if you pop it, well, then you roll. If you don't, okay, now we're going to milk it down. So At a point, if you're Coach Maddox, are you taking the timeout? You know, they're, they're so hot right now, I'll probably will just let it go down. I'll take this momentum in and don't even try to well, risk Knowing it. they get the football, and, and they've had a, six, a a history of bad luck at the, the last 30 seconds of a, of a half over the spring season and now this fall. This fall season, I just, uh, you're right, get to the half with the lead, get the football and a two-score lead. Stevens content to let the clock run on third and nine, 28-14 Wildcats with the lead. Stevens being chased out of the pocket. He's pressured heading to the near sideline. He's going to get the first down, run out of bounds, 41 seconds. And now you're, you're out at the 25. You've got a, a chance to, okay, we've got some room. Backs aren't against the, the goal line. Right, yeah, now, now you're probably going to see them open the playbook a little bit and try to see if they can force something because over the middle, clock will stop and the chains move. So, Malik Hamilton, the running back, back there in the backfield with Brandon Stevens. Stevens sends Malik out in motion. He is going over the top and uh, in and out of the hands. That was intended for Jayshon Brown. Penalty flag lay at the 38-yard line. Yeah, <coughs> just not a lot of room with that man-to-man -man coverage underneath with the two deep safeties over the top. You've got to throw some really perfect passes if you're going to throw it down the field against this. We'll see what the official has. Looked like there may have been a little bit of holding, some jersey separation, but uh, you don't see them going. Yeah, they're going to walk this off against the. Pass interference. Defense number three. Ball placed to spot a foul. Automatic first down. What a big difference that is. And, and Coach Lott and I talk about this a lot. At the high school level, it's a 10-yard penalty. As a defensive coordinator, you, are you, if you're beat and you're 50 yards down the field, grab and push and tackle. We teach that. That's what, that is what's taught by us. First down and 10 from the 38-yard line, 36 seconds to go until halftime. Steven calls for it. Back to pass. He's once again going over the top, and right there is Weathersby. Weathersby is going to pick that one off, and he's got a chance. 25-30, 35 goes to Mario to the 40. Again, cover. They're playing man. The quarterback sees man. I, my man can beat that man. The problem is there's two safeties deep as well, and the safety's the one that picked it off. Penalty flag on the far side of the field. Looks like it's going to bring this one back. And, you know, Coach, I'm going to tell you. Offside, defense, number 38. It's a five-yard penalty. Remains first down. So that was that free play. That, uh, that you talked about, but nothing cracks me up any more than see a team that's down by a couple of scores, showboating and pointing and, and, and scoreboarding and things like that. When you're down, hey, let's go in there. Let's, let's be thankful we got this, and, and let's go back to work. No, there's no doubt. We we'll bailed them out right there. It's okay. We'll bounce right back here. Stevens with Hamilton sets him up behind him. Three receivers to the top, one in the near side. That will with Hamilton out of the backfield has been there. Stevens back to pass again, man coverage, a little stop route, and they're gonna call pass interference again. It looks like on the Wildcats, it's gonna be on number 29, Damazo Varico Robinson. Former receiver, Maze was, was a receiver when I was at LC. Playing back now. Pass interference, defense number 29. Ball plays to spot the foul, automatic first down. Now, 
Eight seconds remain until halftime. Wildcats with the lead, 28-14. But what you're seeing Oklahoma Panhandle do is throw it down and try to pick up a penalty. If they get the penalty, of course, it will be a spot foul, and it extends it one untimed down right here. So uh, look for them to try to draw something against that press man coverage. And you don't change anything. Will that official keep throwing that flag on Tiki Tack? At some point, he's going to get tired of throwing it, and they're going to let you play. Right. Eight seconds to go. First down and 10 from the 48 of the Wildcats. Over the middle, again, great job. I'm going to tell you, this defense for the Wildcats here down the stretch has been solid. Cam Campbell, Cam Campbell, the freshman defensive back from Laplace in there, only took three seconds. The number of contributing freshmen, Coach, you just got to love that. There's no doubt. This is going to carry you over. I mean, it's, 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 it's going to carry you over next year. It's going to carry you over at the end of this season. They're going to be sophomores by the time this, the middle of the second half of the part of the season comes around. Second down and 10 from the 48-yard line. Five seconds until halftime. Wildcats with a two-touchdown lead, 28-14. Stevens claps, calls for the ball, back to pass. Good pressure coming up the middle. He's being chased around. The big guys are after him. He slips out of that one. Is going to have some room to run to the 40. Now 35, and he thinks better of it. He's got five orange jerseys. But credit the Wildcats pressure of Kennery Tur Turiak and Brody Gaspard that really just took anything out of the uh, the idea, the playbook for Oklahoma pan, Panhandle. Yeah, no, it caused that pressure, make you scramble around. I don't know if they were trying to hit a quick one and get down and then and spike it or whatever they were trying to do right there, but the, the big scramble negated everything, and, you know, I was surprised you didn't just chuck it down the field and see if you could get something, but we'll take it. First half is in the books, and it has been a long time since the suspected 2 o'clock kickoff. But uh, once it finally got started, it was a rapidly moving first half. 28 to 14, we're at halftime. We're going to throw it back to my buddy Rich Dupree, who's somewhere on a ship somewhere in the Gulf, we don't know where, enjoying himself. And through the magic of technology, we're going to go back to our halftime show. It is Louisiana College 28, the Oklahoma Panhandle State University Aggies 14, back after halftime on 104.3 The Bridge move on it, then that's when they're going to say, nope, you can't do that because there was a response. Offside, defense number 11, it's five-yard penalty. They'll blow it dead, dead if you're if the offense moves in reaction or if they feel like the quarterback is unabated too, like he's about I mean, to protect him, they'll blow that one dead. If they tries to get back and nobody moves, they'll let that thing go and you get that free play. Boy, turning around and getting just a third and two out of this, you got to really feel – uh, like you've won this, go out and convert this. There's another offsides. Free play this time. Nobody moved. Powell going over the top. That ball is in and out of the hands. And uh, great defensive coverage. That was intended for Glenn White down the sideline. And that's going to give the Wildcats a first down. Offside. Defense number 11 after five-yard penalty. Just love those plays. That's another great job by the offensive line of holding in there and yeah, giving that free play. play. I remember, you know, as a player, a half of our touchdowns came off that type of, we call it a freeze play. And, and that, they execute that perfectly. It's a free play, and, you know, it's a 50-50 ball, and we get the first down even though we didn't catch the football. Out to the 49-yard line, and all of that, three productive plays, a couple of them by penalties, followed the big sack. Powell back in there now, first and 10, and looked like the – Defensive end lined up across the line of scrimmage again, but the toss out to Briscoe, going to pick up five. And and I don't know, somewhere yeah, in the middle Briscoe of those last three or four plays, right, Coach, on, the momentum, it looked like the, the nerves got knocked off there for a while because it looked like they were playing a little bit with some some nerves on them. Yeah, no, it's you just need a, you just need a break. You need a break. And they got that break on that big play and then the two penalties. And so now we got the momentum. Now we're rolling down here on the positive side of the field. Looking forward to see what see what see. Uh, I think that puts us back now. We should be here two minutes or second down and four. Powell with the handoff, no play action. This time it's dumped off to Darbone, and that's probably just his first or second reception of the season, trying to s snap something out there. But what that does is it loosens up that defensive end. There's only a two-yard gain, but that's the first time now that guy's not is going to be a step slower on time, trying to go for the running back because he fear, fears that fullback slipping out in the flat. There you go. Hopefully that will fix our audio issues that we had back in the studio. We'll uh, we're hopefully getting things back going here. I think we have. 
Third down and three for Louisiana College ball rests at the 44-yard line. Again, another big conversion. Powell back to pass. He zips this one out there, and it's complete. Micah has that one. He's going to hold on to it, and that's a big first down, down to the 32-yard line. Dropped off in a zone coverage, playing what we call cover three. So he was reading the linebacker. He chased the little out route, and the curl route happened right behind him. That's a great job by James, reading the zone coverage and really fitting. It's the first time I've really seen him read that coverage and, and, and fire an accurate ball into zone coverage today. Minute 53 to go, third quarter play. Wildcats on top, 28-21. Powell checking out things over on the sideline. Glenn White now the receiver to the near side. A stack over there with Kanan Leon and Micah Dunn to the far side. That is right up the middle, number 23, Cameron Brown. Number 23 is Cameron Brown going in there and getting, uh, giving Briscoe a little bit of a breather. Remember, we saw Mark Kalen come out early on. Yeah, it seems like, I mean, the, every time the defense plays, you know, a little saw, I, I would see them go right back to their pressure here. I feel like that's where uh, they've been giving Louisiana College the most, uh, the, the most issues, so they may go right back to it here. Loss of, of maybe a negligible amount. Keep it second down and 10. Nope. This is from the 32-yard line of the Aggies. LC, back to pass is Powell. Over the middle, that one is just out of the outstretched hands and, and had, had an opportunity to hit Micah there. Yeah, they're not doing a great job of disguising it. It's one thing I thought Louisiana College defense did a good job do. They try to show me and try to back out of it. They're really, they, when, you'll see when their corners are lining up deep, they're going to play, they're playing their zone. They're not bringing pressure. When they come down, they're bringing the pressure. So James should have a pretty good pre-snap look and understanding of what they're doing before he snaps the football. Third down and 10. Wildcats again continuing to march down the field, chew up some clock, but have got to get something on the board. They w lead by seven, but, uh, Aggies were able to cut that in half here in the third quarter. 28-21, under a minute to play. Powell back to pass. He's looking, throws this one. Same play in Leon, in and out of the hands of Kanan Leon. That one was dropped and nowhere to go, but would have been six or seven yards forward down the field. And now, Coach, you're just wondering, do they take the opportunity to go with a long field goal? Yeah, oh, that's a long ways right there. What would that be? 49. 49. They really, you can see uh, that pass did not go beyond the first. And they weren't trying to get the first. And they were just trying to get a fourth and short to either get that more manageable down or maybe go for it right there. So that was a, that was a big miss right there by us. And uh, looks like we're going for it. This is where the Aggies like to bring pressure. They don't show yet. They drop back into coverage. Powell with time. And be pressure throws this one off his back foot. That's going to be intercepted. Penalty flag, and it's going to be pass interference as one, two, three, four flags come flying. And it's going to be a spot foul first down, and Powell still on the ground, not getting up. Deep. Defensive pass interference, and uh, with Powell not coming up, looked like he was cramping up, and so... If they called timeout to help him out, they're going to have to bring Powell out for a play. Another very smart play by the receiver. A lot of times you see balls severely underthrown. You see them give up on that. But because he tried to come back, he came back through the defender and got that call. And that moves the ball all the way down to the 17-yard line. The Wildcats bailed out on that one, and, and Powell was pressured. Just had to throw it up and make something happen. And, uh, and at that point, an interception really wouldn't have hurt you much. Nope. But uh, you get the penalty out of it. And now Powell has a fresh set of downs inside the 20. Handoff goes to Briscoe as he stutter steps and is going to be brought down. And, man, it, that run game has been difficult to find here uh, all game. And, again, it's not because the offensive line's not doing their job. It's just a numbers game. They've got more numbers right there. LC knew it. What they're just trying to do is keep them honest. We've got the lead. We still, you know, we, we still want to run this clock down. But now here it is in second long. Now we've got to get half of it back. Briscoe averaging under two yards a carry today, but just showing committed to the run. And what the run does is it just grinds some clock. We're down at two and one. That's going to do it for the third quarter of play. Wildcats lead 28 to 21. We'll be back after this on the Wildcat Radio Network, 104.3 The Bridge.
at this second down and 14 from the 21 yard line as we start the fourth quarter play. Kane and Leon comes into motion. They're gonna do the reverse. Coming back to the near side, that's Mikhail. Mikhail getting to the outside. Good block to the near side. Coach, you call it a hold, I call it a block. Gonna get down to the 15 yard line and the coaches outside were calling it as well. That's just good downfield blocking. Well, you know, one thing we don't work on in quarterback individual drills is downfield blocking. So I can't fault James right there. I'm glad he stuck his head in there and tried to help his, his buddy out. I mean, we didn't get the holding call. Third down and seven. Wildcats have it at the Aggies 15 yard line. Here y'all, the echo, the echo back in the studio is, uh, is got to come down, please. Third down and seven. Powell stands at the 20, calls for the ball, is going to do a quarterback draw. He's got a hole in the middle down inside the 10 to the 9 to the 9-yard line coach. It's going to be fourth down and two. And, uh, again, I don't think you waver from it. You you go after it on fourth down. Yeah, by, by running that play, they're already in field goal range. That play was ran because they knew they were about to go for it right here. Sammy Feaster coming in. He's taking the place of Kanan Leon Powell has Briscoe back in the backfield with him. Now Feaster is the other blocker to the right side. Coach Feaster's son. Receiver to the near side, 14 seconds on the play clock, 13-32. Fourth down and two, and that's going to be a timeout called. We'll keep it right here just to reset some things. And, uh, and, and Coach, you were you were telling us about the young man Feaster that was coming in there. Yeah, Coach Feaster, you know, a really prominent coach up in northwest Louisiana, coached a lot of really good teams at Parkway and, and throughout. And so uh, I saw his son at Glenbrook uh, when Coach Maddox was up there, so had that connection. Uh, um, and glad to see he's here at Louisiana College and get some playing time here early as a uh, early in his career. All right, so we'll reset things now. It's 28 to 21, 13 28 remaining in the ball game, and they have changed coach, and they're going to bring Hunter Martinson out for the for the field goal attempt. This will be the ball snapped from the nine, so make it a 26 yard field goal attempt when they do this from the left hash looking for a two score lead for the Wildcats. Yeah, I, if they were going to kick it on fourth down, I'd like to see them try to take a shot right there then on third down. But either way, maybe they, you know, you never know what Hunter's distance is. Maybe that, you know, the lab before they needed those extra five yards to really feel like he's in his wheelhouse. Looking for a two score lead, Martinson ready. Snap is back, hold is down, kick is up, and it is good. 31-21, back in 60 on 104.3 The Bridge.
Here we go back to Wildcat Field. I am Doug Gann alongside of Coach Ben McLaughlin. Coach, it has been a pleasure having you up here. We've got a lot of football left in this one and an exciting 10-point lead for the Wildcats as they just capped off that 19-yard field goal. Yeah. 26 correction, I'm sorry, 26-yard field goal. You said, uh, you know, a lot more relaxing. This is not relaxing. I'm amped right here. This is, you know, <laughs> I feel like I've got a... You ain't been sitting in that chair 25 years, Coach. You learn to relax and enjoy these. Martinson puts a foot into it, oh, drives this one back into That's the back end zone, and uh, up the hill between the, the two gators that are back there. And uh, that will put... That will put first down and 10 for for the the Aggies. And, yeah, Coach, uh, been a long time at it. You learn I've called some 70-point some, some blowouts. I've called some 70-point losses and some state championship games and a lot of it. And so uh, you just learn to in, in, sit back and enjoy a little bit of football. What's the, what's the toughest ones? Uh, the, 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 the blowouts. The second losing half of losing. The second half because – you know, you're not as it's it's not as difficult to, to to tell stories when you're when you're up by 50 or 60 as opposed to when you're behind by it. Stevens calls the ball. This is a wide receiver handoff coming to the inside, and he's off to the races. He's to the 50 now, 40. That's number 29, 30 to the 20, 10, and that is Willie McCline on the inside handoff going to the house. 31, 27. PAT is pending, and oh my goodness, that was a big one. Yeah, you know, Coach Maddox going for the field goal right there. It's when your defense is playing well, that's the call to make right there to beat it. But then you can't give up that explosive play, so we can't trade field goals for touchdowns. So we're in for a battle right here in this fourth quarter. Explosive plays may be the trending hashtag before this thing is over. Early on in the career, I never would have said trending hashtag either. You can believe that. I thought it was a number sign. <laughs> right. Kick is up, and it is good. 31-28. Back after this. This is LC Wildcat football on 104.3 The Bridge. 13-11. Oklahoma Panhandle, 28. Your Louisiana College Wildcats, 31. Back to live action here, Wildcat Field, Louisiana College on top, 31 to 28. Brandon Isaac with Mikhail Franklin back deep to receive. As coach, uh, this game was 28-14 at the half and an outscored 14 to three have been the Wildcats. This is that sky kick. Got to turn around and see where it's at. That's going to bang around. Isaac's got it now, the 20, 25. Brandon Isaac bangs off, spins off his own guy out to the 31 yard line. And that's where the Cats will have it. And uh, you've got to something. There is an eternity of football remaining in this with 13 minutes to go. Yeah, there's no more milking it. There's no more trying to, no, no, no. you've got to call your plays that you use to attack and you've got to go after them and go win this football game on offense when you're on offense and defense has to go to the same when they get out their own defense. The momentum has switched completely over to this OPSU team. Oklahoma Panhandle State University trails by three, but it just fresh off of a 75-yard touchdown run from Willie McCline. And now James Powell and that Wildcat offense have got to go down the field and make this back to a two-point score. Powell being pressured is going to step up in the pocket, avoids a man, got to tuck the ball away. He's to the 30, 35 goes Powell before he is hammered out of bounds but hangs on to the football. Tried that same flat curl concept, and when they run man, it's not as good. And so they run man, and they catch us right there. Good call by their D coordinator, and James did a good job of not forcing that ball got in it and turned it into a positive play. 
takes second down and two, regardless of what the down marker says, it's not fourth. Watching that Penn State game a couple weeks ago, you gotta <laughs> keep count. They'll, they'll short you down if you don't watch out. 12-43 and counting in this one. Wildcats with a three-point lead. Briscoe's got the ball. Starts one way, cuts the other, moves back behind the line of scrimmage and is going to lose a yard or two. Great defensive pressure by Antonio Vaughn of Oklahoma Panhandle State. And now down on the field is Kobe Jeter. Yeah, that's another one of those, he's been doing a great job all game of just, you know, taking, that was one where, you know, he, he probably should have just taken that half yard gain right there and try to do a little bit too much and end up losing a couple. Third down and three, you see Jeter get up and he is, looks like he's cramping up the way they're holding the backside of it, not sure. We don't want to speculate there at all, but when we come back, it's going to be third down and three. Coming into the game, Feaster, Feaster, Sammy Feaster returns in here. You've got Glenn White at the receiver to the near side. Tay Cole is to the far side. And uh, we'll see Briscoe in the backfield with Powell. So you've got Darbone, the big tight end on the near side, that big offensive line. Coach, if it doesn't look like they're trying to run this football here, I don't know. Yeah. Feaster and Darbone switch sides. They flip back to the far side of the field now. And you know, sometimes you, you get in this set though to get your one-on-one. -on -one. It's sometimes it's your best passing formations though. So we'll see. looks like they're in a pass defense though. So we should get the run. Pressure coming from Oklahoma Panhandle. Briscoe gets to the outside. Good block on the edge that time. And that was set up number 77, Cam Frederick, coach. And when Frederick, the big guy, was out there making that block, he set the edge for Briscoe to get around. Yeah, and they didn't, they've been bringing that edge pressure all the time. They backed out of it right there. So, hey, we'll, we'll take it. We'll take, give us that soft edge. And Cam Frederick definitely took it in the back, made a good read off his block. Every time you get a, a new set of downs, that gives you legitimately a minute and a half to two minutes off of the clock if you if you work it correctly so four five first downs in this one and a touchdown and you give yourself you get yourself deep into that that crucial time of the game oh yeah 11 42 to go 31 28 wildcats clinging to a three-point lead briscoe's got it he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and driven back after a one-yard gain forward progress will give him to the 45. You know, every offensive coordinator has their milk it in their in their uh, the time clock sheet where it says, okay, they've got two timeouts, we can run this much off. Now we they have three timeouts, we can run this much off. And so, you know, we're not quite there yet, and probably one or two more possessions. But at some point, that's going to come into play. Powell looking at second down and nine, and we'll tell you a little something. We hear great things up in the press box. That's when I, the the door's not soundproof up there. So we're gonna we just and this is actually a good story. This isn't a bad one. By any means, there aren't any bad stories out of it at all. Under 11 to play, second down and nine. Ball is up the middle, and that is Cameron Brown carrying the football up the middle. So uh, we, we talk about that NASCAR offense that you like to run, and then when you were, there were, I guess, 10 minutes to go in the St. Thomas Moore game, and you guys held the ball for about eight and a half minutes. We turned that the pace car offense. Went from NASCAR to pace car just like that. Third down and seven from the 47-yard line. Wildcats looking to the near side. Need another big conversion. That's what we talked about on the last series is converting first downs here and chewing up that clock. 10-16 to go in the ball game. 31-28. Cats with the lead. Powell back to pass. Looking over the top. Looking for a lot of it. Got Leon. Leon to the 25-20. 10 5 Don't chew that clock. Just get the end zone. Touchdown. Wildcats. Touchdown. Kanan Leon from James Powell. And that wasn't a man-to-man. -man. You know, they've been playing so much man-to-man. -man. They stepped back in zone, and, and James did a great job of seeing the bender, the safety didn't chase, and got a step behind and, and was able to put that ball right on the money. That's a great throw by him and great catch by Kanan. From the slot, there aren't many people that are going to keep up man-to-man -man with Kanan Leon. Nope, nope. He's very explosive, very explosive player. 37 to 28. Wildcats extend the lead now two scores, looking to make it a 10 point lead. We've got a timeout coming up following this PAT. Snap is back, Dunn's got it down, kick is up and it is good. 38-28 back in 60 seconds on 104.3 The Bridge.
Here we go back to Wildcat Field. I am Doug Gann alongside of Ben McLaughlin, bringing you this exciting Sooner Athletic Conference matchup. Hunter Martinson puts a foot into this one, won't find the end zone unless they let it go, and that's going to be one that bounces around, stays in bounds, and he picked up at the five-yard line, down to the three, and that's one of those that uh, the return man just thought it was going to go into the end zone, thought it was going to go out of bounds, and it didn't do either of them. It just checks up like a, a, a pitching wedge. They're about the three-yard line, and, and man, that special teams coach has been such a, a difficult chore for this Oklahoma Panhandle team today. I said it before, that it's that hidden yardage. That's yardage that you won't find hardly anywhere on a stat sheet, but look at how much further they've got to go now to put some points on the board. We're winning that hidden yardage. It's a huge part of the game. They will start out from the four-yard line. It's Oklahoma Panhandle State trailing by 10 to your Wildcats. 9.58 to go, and that defense going to pin their ears back and come after Stevens on this possession. They switch their tight end from right to left and now back. Hand off Jones's play action, going over the top, looking for the big one. That is Brimage that has the two big touchdowns on the day for them, for OPSU. Don't be surprised to see that again. Look, that's some of a – you get backed up there, you know, the defense is pinning their ears back. They're thinking you're going to run the football. There's just a chance, much chance of them stopping us for a two or three yard loss. Take another shot or two if you get man to man. Complete opposite of trying to go into the end zone from the 10 yard line. You have no room. This way, you run your guys out there. You've got anywhere you want yep. to go. Going to be a timeout on the field. We'll see if it's um, one that's been called or what. You see that Louisiana College switch, they've already got their safeties deeper. They said, okay, we're, we're not going to give you that opportunity again. That's too much of an opportunity. You get three wide out, three one-on-one -on -one balls, you're going to complete one of them. So, go and take that away. I sports with my conduct. On the visiting team, home coach. It's half distance to the goal. This is his first unsportsmanlike conduct foul of the game. So, unsportsmanlike conduct, and that was thrown over on the sideline is why we didn't see it. And, and why is it important, Coach, that he announced that that was his first unsportsmanlike conduct penalty? He gets one more and he gets ejected. So, Coach Majeski has got to make sure he stays behind that second, about behind that first white line. Kind of like technical fouls in basketball. You get two of them and you're gone. Second down now, half the distance to the goal line, so just a two-yard penalty, but second down and 12 from the end zone is Stevens. He does hand this one off to Jones, and the ball is right on the goal line. They do get out of there. I had an opportunity for a safety, but a great job of running by Jarmalin Jones. It's just so hard to run the football out of that end zone when you've got everything clogged up. You can't take chances. You're just putting your head down. So. Um, we'll see what they do here on third and long. I bet the defense plays a little bit more of a pass coverage right here, not, not fearing the run as well. You just want, if you're a Wildcat, you want to get a stop shy of the first down. Press coverage by the corners. Back to pass is Stevens. He's going over the top. This looks like a great pass out on the corner, and that was received by Jay Shone Brown back in coverage was Gerald Burton also over there was DeMario Weathersby and uh, wow that's that just a big time play of sitting back and throwing it up. Yeah I don't know this corner back here act like he's backed off and that one didn't I don't know if that was a miscommunication or if they were playing a, uh, different coverages. Handoff is kept or actually it's kept by Stevens he's going to spin around and go up the middle and 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 there's some I mean a shot taken by 
the uh, number 14, Jordan Jackson. No penalty is called there, and he just levels, leveled the Wildcats number 29, uh, Maza Robinson. And uh, this thing has an opportunity to get itself a little bit chippy before it's over with, with, with plays like that. Really good job by by Mazea not responding right there and getting getting the flag on him and uh, controlling his his self as well. Eight and a half to go, second down and four. Play action, pass out to no one over the head intended for number 82, and that is Jalen Partita. We've seen him be a favorite receiver. And uh, coach, this is how rivalries are born. You get a game and it gets a little chippy in it. That uh, that that leads to some some rivalries down the road. It's not gonna take long for LC in this conference to figure out who they who they don't like and who they really don't like. <laughs> That's right, no friends in football. Third down and five from the 38 yard line. 8.20 to go in the ball game. Cats lead by 10, 38-28. Stevens looking over, he's got Jones in the backfield. Jones swings out, good pressure coming. That pass is caught by Brimage and that is his, goodness, that is his fourth reception and uh, they're just knocking these these cat defenders down after the whistle yeah, there's still some stuff going on post whistle again the most important thing for LC is don't retaliate don't give them a free 15 because that's the one way back in the game is to lose your cool and the cats are not doing that so that just shows discipline and, and a great great coached team yes sir under eight minutes to go 38-28, Cats with the lead. First down and 10, OPSU at the 45. In motion comes Stallone. Go, going back over the top, wide open is Brimage. He's complete, shakes Burton, and now trying to get to the house. He's to the 10, the five, touchdown. That is his third touchdown reception of the game. And uh, firing up the, the few fans that are here from Oklahoma Panhandle and those coaches that are sitting outside our door as well. Yeah, they ran this little motion guy out here, and they've been throwing that little swing screen a lot, right? And so now the corner sees that. The corner comes up thinking that. He kind of gives a little pump and then gets on the sideline, and now the safety's late getting over. Well-designed play. They've been setting that, th setting that up all game. 98 yards on the drive, Coach. Remember, that was a ball that bounced around, and they picked it up down inside their five. Extra point is up, and it is good. 38-35, back in 60 on 104.3 The Bridge. Here we go. We've got 741 remaining to again alongside Ben McLaughlin. And coach, you couldn't have picked a better game to come be a part of. This has been fun. It has been an old classic Louisiana college shootout. We had a lot of these way back in the day. So way back in the day. A gunslinger, they called you. This one is is put into the air. And it's going to be Franklin's got it in crossing all the way across the field like he likes to mm. do. Mm. 35 40. There goes Michael to the 40. 30, he's gonna house another one. 10, five, Michael Franklin, penalty flag on the field. And they're going to call this one all the way back. But I'm telling you, Mikhail Franklin is impressive, but they are going to get number 22, Austin King for the penalty. You know, the frustrating thing is that flag is on that side. There's a really good chance they watch this film that that hold or blocking the back probably didn't affect the run. Illegal block below the waist. Mm. 
Receiving team number 22. It's a 15 yard penalty. First down. Remember the name Mikhail Franklin. He is a monster. I mean, just flat. So he'll start on the far side, sprint all the way to the near side, and go up the sideline. And there's not many that will keep up with Franklin when he's got the ball in his hands. Needless to say, it is called back. So, yes, it's a 10-yard penalty, Coach, but it's an 85-yard seven-point penalty. Mm. Well, just got to regroup here and, and, and put a draw. Again, we have the lead. We want to go score points. But it's got to be a good a good sustained drive right here to give our defense a little bit of break and so that, and, and go get a few first downs. Dunn and Williams to the near side. Tay Cole is the receiver to the top of the field. Briscoe in the backfield with James Powell. Darbone, the H-back, set off to the right side of that offensive line as we move left to right, heading from the Pine Street end zone down to English Village. Wildcats need to get into the English Village end zone to stretch this lead back out to 10. Powell calls for the ball, looks for the quick pass, does a little shoulder fake, tucks it in, designed quarterback run, and that's going to be a big 13-yard pickup and a Wildcat first down. Every time they keep dropping back in that zone, we get our running lanes. They don't load the box up, so that's a... Uh, uh, you look to see them go back to what they were doing and really loading that box up and challenging us to make a throw over the top. Feaster back in. He replaces Zion. You've got Feaster and Tay Cole to the top of the field. And Micah in man coverage to the near side with number nine, Antonio Vaughn. Vaughn giving seven, eight yards of cushion, not wanting to press up on Micah at all. Detroit, Michigan. All over the place is this panhandle team. Powell calls for the ball. This time Briscoe gets it up the middle. And it's just continuing to run and push that. That's that's the old rugby scrum there. And it goes good for, uh, they'll give him six yards on the carry. That's one way to do it. Get your four or five yards, run some more clock, keep, the, keep it running. Powell now has 41 yards rushing in this game, and it's crucial. It's not a lot of yards, but from a quarterback it is, and what it means is you've got to take account for the quarterback. You've got to say, okay, well, he can run. No doubt, and it makes safeties. It makes a lot more eyes go to him for an extra half second, which gives you some opportunities possibly to attack him in the pass game as well. Second down and five, six minutes, three seconds to go here. Wildcats lead 38-35. Two to the near side, big, heavy offensive line out there looking to block for Briscoe. He sutter steps, gets past the 40 to the 41-yard line, going to be third and a yard, Coach, and that's where you like to be. Yeah, they're sitting back in three safety. Look, uh, keep, keep doing that, please, because we're going to keep running the football and getting four yards at a time. Look to see them, though, here on third and short to come down and try to take those running lanes away. Setting things up now, the receiver switch to the near side. Micah is on the numbers in the slot is Tay Cole. Again, the big heavy line stacked up. You've got eight guys in the box for Oklahoma Panhandle. That's where the quarterback run can really help even out these numbers right here. Look for James again maybe to try to get this first down. 5-14 and counting out to the 42-yard line. 41, need to get to the 42. Get Briscoe, that's all on him, gets to the 45. And that's a Wildcat first down, reset the chains. And looking to grind things out. 38-35, Wildcats clinging to a three-point lead. They had a 28-14 cushion at the half. That play was so close to being a two-yard loss, and it was so close to being a 60-yard run for a touchdown. Right. There was that when they when you sell all out as a defense like that, it, you've got to get them down, or that could be a big play for in our favor. So, again, you know, you look at the wide receiver set. There's only two to the near side, but the the strength is that big offensive line, coach. You got six guys on the line of scrimmage. You've got the blocking back in Darbone to the left side. It's Feaster now. And Powell is going to keep it himself. Powell gets in the open to the 40 goes James Powell. 30, 25, 20, got to get down and does. To the inside, the 20, James Powell down to the 18-yard line and a huge, huge statement run for James Powell. 
So when they play defense, the defense has what they call a plus one. They've got one more defender than you, but when the quarterback runs, it's even. And the unblocked guy on defense was blocked by the running back, which is what sprung that. So that was all because of the quarterback running game, because of what James brings to this offense. James having a tremendous, tremendous dual threat type of day. Has thrown for 186 yards and two touchdowns. Has carried for 78. He is working on your MVP of this game. First down and 10 from the 18, 350 and counting. Glenn White comes in motion, now goes back. Handoff is to Briscoe, he spins around, trying to get to the corner, but he's gonna meet a host of Aggie defenders and be dropped down for a two yard loss. Now you start looking at that sheet and start figuring out how much time can we whittle down. <laughs> Oklahoma Panhandle State University takes their first timeout of the second half. They have two remaining and starting to get to the point where they have got to save clock if they want to do this. But, Coach, if you can get out of here pushing this thing, you'd like to go down and get some points. But if you go down there and get your seven points out of this, get it to a two-score game, and you, you like your odds here. There's no doubt. I mean, you know, the three points there will get you to a six, which which keeps keep, makes them have to go get a touchdown. But it's going to be seven points here would obviously go a whole long, uh, long ways to help sealing this deal up. You know, 0 and 5, been in some close ones, had some moral victories. They don't ever post moral victories along with, uh, along with a coach's record or a team's record on there got to find a way to gut one out and win more, a close one in the fourth quarter. And those cats look like they are going to close this one out and trying to find a way to claw their way through this thing. Second down and 11, 337. Remember, the Aggies have two timeouts in their pocket. Wildcats 18 yards from that English Village end zone. So I'm looking at my chart here, I pull it up on my phone. So with three minutes and 30 seconds and they have two timeouts left, like our fourth down snap would be on two minutes and 37 seconds. So obviously it means we've got to work, uh, got to get one more first down right here. You mean you guys have a chart for that? That's it. I have to keep that in my head. Briscoe's got it to the near side. He's to the 20, 15, 10, cuts inside five. Does Devin Briscoe banged around out of bounds at the one yard line, but not before Devin Briscoe Gets that thing inside the one. The Wildcats will have it first and goal from the one-yard line, and that is not a bad place to be. No, you know, I, at first I thought he was cutting it back to try to stay in bounds. I was about to say super smart play right there, but no, no, he was cutting it back because he saw the end zone. He, he was, was going getting to into score. the end zone. Look, I watched a little of that uh, Neville West Monroe game, and the running back would get a big run and then slide down and stop because he knew he was going to start the clock and keep it away from the other offense. These running backs these days are really, really intelligent. Devin Briscoe lining up. Devin looking to, to get into the end zone for the second time today. Handoff goes to Briscoe. Following that big offensive line, banging around, it's going to be denied and won't get in there. Totally fine with that. And all that does is continue. One thing, it's either going to call a timeout or you're going to run some clock. Let's go on run. And they do call the timeout, does do the Aggies. Second timeout, Oklahoma. I, I can't get over that. You have a chart for that? Coach, you got to just, you got to, you got to, you teach math, don't you? Yeah, but no, no, but hey, <laughs> you, you don't want to rely on math when the adrenaline's going. You want to know, all right, we, they've got this many timeouts, there's this much time, how much can we run off right Look, here? let me tell you, for those of you that are listening, anything I, I say to Coach Ben is completely in jest, <laughs> so don't, uh, mm -mm. <laughs> no, I, uh, I know my rightful place in the booth, on the right end of the booth, not the left side, where all the wisdom is. Loss of a yard, Devin Briscoe. I've got to predict that he is going to get the ball and get into the end zone on this play. So this is this is why. So with two minutes and 45 seconds left, uh, you know, so we can, if we, we're not going to right now, but if you just kneeled on it, they would get the fourth down snap would happen at 31 seconds left in the ball game. Are you counting the timeout from? Yes. So you've got that second, third, fourth. Use the timeout. Well, they got hold on. Are there. you saying they have one timeout uh, left? They do. Okay, so that puts it at 59 seconds. So it does See change there? the game a little See, bit. See, 29 second difference on there, coach. Thought they'd chart out the window. Well, I have a chart, but this is small. You put on the my chart up. We're watching football. James Powell's got it. He's got Briscoe flanked to the right. Feaster switches from the left to the right. Powell is dropped in the backfield, and that will use up the final timeout. We do believe the clock will stop with 2.36. And uh, 
So third down, this snap would be here, 42nd clock. Oklahoma, final timeout. Got to find a way. Look, Coach, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have you reset your phone or something. And no, put it's them just too small right here. <laughs> okay. I'm on the right time, right timeouts here. But honestly, right here, so if you don't get this, you've got to weigh the difference between do we, do we want a field goal, get six points up, and still be able to lose if they score a touchdown, or do you run the ball and put, take 40 more seconds off and make them go 95 yards again? That's a tough call. You probably want to take the field goal, but it is going to be something in their mind that they're going to have to think about. I'm going to tell you this this I'm gonna tell you this I run the ball here try to get in the end zone don't let the clock stop run down everything that I can take a timeout with about a second to go and then I go in there and try to get in zone and make them go 98 yards and beat me again or the other thing is give the ball to Briscoe put them in the end zone right here and let's not have this discussion there's no doubt that's the easy <laughs> right. way to do it 38 35 Wildcats clinging to that three-point lead they've got it third down and goal from the Aggie seven yard line. Dunn to the near side, he's the receiver. Blocking back is Feaster to the left side, Briscoe flank to the left of Powell. Go back to pass, back they're coming shoulder. to the near side, don't get it, that'll stop the clock. 2.32 to go here, and now it is decision time on what you do. Yeah, at this point with the clock stopped, now you're going to have to take the field goal and, you, and you gotta, you've got to play to keep them out of the end zone. So the other play would have been to run the football out right there, like you said, and, and take the 40 more seconds off there. And uh, Well, I think you throw the ball. You're, you throw the ball, I think, that your, your thought process is that you got two downs at it. Or I, I just don't. They're out there with the time, injury timeout for cramps that are that are now, but that does again it saves you about 40 seconds off the clock. Mm -hmm. uh, I have not seen Hunter Martinson making his way out into the in there yet. That offense is there, and I think Coach Maddox and the way that defense is played might want to put it on the the pressure defense because you take a blocked kick out of the way. Remember they had that happen to them last week. You take a kickoff return out of the way by going for it here, mm -hmm. and you force them to go 90-something yards on there with no timeouts. And, and the thing they haven't done is they haven't driven the ball down the field. Martinson ball. coming out to try this field goal. That will make it 41-35 if it is converted. They will mark the ball at the 19, give it a 29-yard field goal attempt if it's good. We'll take the quick timeout and come back. We've got 232 Wildcats up three, looking to double their lead to six. Dunn in there to hold for the Cats. Checks Martinson, now turns, draws the snap. High snap, but it's oh, brought a down. You can't jump. They call yes, the penalty flag, it. and there it is, but it looks like they're going to call something. If the official called it early enough, no, no, it's on, it should be on them. When You can't jump over and land. And look, Martinson knows that. Yep. Panhandle State's talking a little that there was something after the play, but Coach Ben instantly <laughs> spotted that using leverage is what they call it to get over the top of the line. You can't leap and then land on somebody else. If you're going to jump, you've got to land back on your own two feet. You can't jump over, so that's uh, definitely we'll, not a... We'll get the description now. Been disconcerting signals. Point good. And I'm not sure what what he called that. It was jumbled. He said some sort of disconcerting signals. I don't know. Anyway, field goal is good. We'll keep it right here. We're not going to go anywhere on there, Coach. And and uh, you were saying about the the young man that. He come up, tried to jump over and get it. And, and Coach Maddox still wanting a little more clarification. I don't know if necessarily one of those times he could have left his mic on. That would have been great. Yeah, I don't know. I, I'm really looking forward to, to getting with Coach Coach Maddox after the game and seeing what their that explanation they're giving him. I really thought that was going to be a, a penalty on them and give us a fresh set of downs to run this thing out. Out at the one-yard line, head first and goal. Wildcats settle for the field goal. Martinson good from 29, but it is a six-point difference 
right now. Uh, you have to force, you, you force the Aggies to go down and get a touchdown. But this is where special teams is so brutally important. You've got to cover well. You can't let a big run. And if anything, you'd like one of those that squibbed around like it did the last time. Yeah, the thing that makes me nervous is Panhandle State hasn't driven the ball for all of their points have been on big plays. Right. So, you know, just hopefully our defense um, are going to come out and, and, and stay on their keys and, and keep, you know, just make them drive. Two minutes and 28 seconds is, is not a lot of time if you keep them in small chunks. Yeah, you're uh, you're facing a 41 to 35 game in this one, and the Wildcats up by six, looking to claw their way to this victory. Martinson putting a foot into it, drives this one down the right side of the field, and that's going to be oh, out of bounds. That will bring the ball out to the 30, 35, 35, 35 is where it'll come out to, and. Uh, was kicking it away from the speedster, not wanting to put it in the middle of the field, but instead that ball just went out of bounds, and that, of course, is a penalty. Thought he almost did it again and, 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 and killed it right there on the on the <laughs> sideline, which would have been awesome for it's us. like the old punters with the coffin corner kicks. You don't see that anymore. No timeouts. Kick out of bounds on the kicking team. Ball being placed at 35-yard line. First... So the ball is placed at the 35-yard line. The nose of the football is there. Wildcats, go ahead. The way this game's been going, this is an eternity right now, the way all these plays have been hitting back and forth. No timeouts left for the Aggies. High snap. Stevens pulls it down. Steele's going to keep it. He's got some room up the middle trying to get to the outside. A busted play is going to get Stevens out of bounds at the 47-yard line and a first down and uh, went from could have been very, very dangerous to wow, what an exciting play by Brandon Stevens. Yeah, it's a good football play by him, smart play. They had that, so that power read and he, he just kept it, not knowing to force a fumble. Three receivers to the top, one in the near side. Wildcats back in coverage. Penalty flag on the play, knocked away. Good defensive play there by the Wildcats. <laughs> Gonna call that on this. Number 38 coming up and making that play was Cam Campbell. We'll go down to the official and see what he's calling. Defense number five. Our penalty remains. That's tough. That's Bremer from the near side defensive end trying to get a head start to get in there. But, uh, Coach, you're, you're in a – Three-man front, four-man front now, and six defenders. One linebacker in the middle is Ernest Simon. We call this the dime defense back in the day. First down and five. Back to pass to Stevens. Ball is in and out of the hands. Beautiful play. That once again was coming up and making a play for the Wildcats, number 38, Cam Campbell. Coach, another freshman making a big impact. And, and look, two or three years from now, these cats are going to be very, very impressive. There's no doubt. They're going to be uh, a force to be reckoned with. Oh, Second and five. Got false start. Yeah, look at the. There you go. That's going to be a false start. So all the way back now, second and 10. 2.02 to go in this ball game. It's 41-35. Might have needed to change the batteries on that one. Second down and 10. Back inside Aggie territory to the 47. Look, of all the games you could have come out and watched and, and been a part of, this is, this is a good one. Stevens has Jones in the backfield. He's got two to the near side, two to the top. Snap is back. Quick hitch out to the near side, complete and out of bounds for a pickup of five on the play out to number 82, Jalen Partita. Yeah, LC's dropping back in what we call a cover four. They're, they have four guys deep, which leaves just three guys underneath. So they're giving up that short, quick stuff and not going to get beat deep over the top. Got two plays to get seven yards. If you are the Aggies, looking over now to their offense side, four down linemen in that dime package that Coach Ben referred to. Nobody, the four, and then they're seven yards off the ball and then two safeties deep. Back to pass to Stevens. He's still getting pressured. Again, that ball is going to be complete 
short of the first down by a yard. Pretty good spot if you're a Wildcat fan. Partita again with the possession reception. This is the ball game on fourth down and one. If the Cats can make a stop here, they can get their first victory of the season. Stevens has Jones. Simon creeping up. Jones is going to keep the ball. No, so oh, beautiful keeper by Stevens. Stevens is rumbling around to the 30. Now 25, 28 yard line. The clock will stop to move the chains and then we'll start and oh my goodness. That's tough for Coach Jansen. You're, you're, they're up tempo, they're running. You get the dime package out. Now it's fourth and one, yet you can't stop the run in the dime package. So you're, you're, you're just kind of putting a tough spot right there. You just need to give up the big run. Great ball fake by Brandon Stevens. Looks his way to Jones and then keeps it. And then you've got all sorts of room to run. First down and 10 from the 23, a minute six to go in this one. Big pressure by Simon, and he just throws that one away. Does Stevens as Ernest Simon came in barreling through. Yeah, you can see that pre-snap. Our corners and safeties came down that, that he was coming and caught him off guard. One minute, one second to go. Wildcats with a six-point lead. Oklahoma Panhandle State University has its second down and 10 from the Wildcats, 23 yard line they've got to have the touchdown and the extra point second down and 10 just a little over a minute to go stevens has jones in the backfield three to the near side one to the top back to pass to stevens oh, he's got this one oh in and out of the hands of jones had it in a Worst spot ever, Coach, right in the hands. Yeah, you know, those plays are really good and effective. The running back out on wheels when you match them up against the linebacker. The problem is running backs typically don't have the hands of receivers. So, yeah, you get the good matchup, but he's not quite used to catching those balls down the field. Third down and 10 for the Aggies. A very solid, solid Wildcat defense out there. Yes, sir, right there. Back to pass is Stevens looking over the middle. That pass is deflected at the line of scrimmage. Big time play in the middle, and that's going to bring up another fourth down. Michael Latin coming up and getting that one, Coach. And uh, my goodness, this, this Wildcat fan base is on their feet. The Wildcat sideline is going crazy. Only ones not jumping around or wearing red today. 57 seconds, 41, 35. Fourth down and 10 from the 18, from the 23. Really interesting to see what they do right here. They're going to come down and, and, and get pressure. They're going to sit back and make him try to find his own window. Stevens surveying the defense, sends Jones out in motion, back to pass. Here comes the pressure. No, that no. ball is in and out. No, that no, is no. a beautiful defensive play by the Wildcats, Tyron Young. And that is a turnover on downs. And ladies and gentlemen, that is going to wrap it up. You're just a couple of snaps away, the victory formation, and the Wildcats will go on to their first victory of the season. Might I add, they'll be undefeated with Coach Ben McLaughlin in the color analyst chair. Yeah, I'll take a little bit of this credit let's for just, sure. Let's just call it, oh, there's a <laughs> penalty flag and it may be another conduct. Yeah. yeah, he might get tossed right here. Yeah, if that's his second one, he gone. Not happy at all. The coaching staff on the far sideline. That's one you, you, you get your um, assistant coach to take that one. It's funny, Coach Giardina was a GA for Coach Majeski at Highland Community College. On the visiting team, assistant coach. It's a 15-yard penalty. That's like your uh, assistant coach in baseball getting thrown out for you. That's, right, no uh, doubt. Yeah. No, Coach Majeski was the offensive coordinator at Highland Community College in 2013, and Coach Giardina was his GA up there, so they kind of have a little bit of a history. 53 seconds, and, and the, the formation that you like to see, that's that victory formation. Cats will have to snap it one more time, but they're going to get their first win of the season coming against a very game Oklahoma Panhandle State University team. Don't forget the Wildcats are on a bye week next week, so no LC football next week. They'll be back in action at Wayland Baptist on October the 16th. 
and you go back and you score watching, you see that I mean this team has you know has beaten a couple teams by some good points. There's some wins out there for this Louisiana College football team. Indeed it is. That's your final score. LC 41. OPSU, the Aggies of Oklahoma Panhandle, 35. Gonna take a break. When we come back, we'll wrap up the Wildcat Post Game Show. We'll announce our player of the game, and we'll do that right after this on 104.3 The Bridge. Great team efforts on both sides. To the fans from Oklahoma Panhandle, Thank you for visiting Pond Hill, Louisiana, and Louisiana College. Safe travels back home. To your team, a great team effort here this afternoon. And one more time, who's got Wildcat spirit out there? And for the Wildcats, a great win here today. Congratulations, Coach Maddox, your staff, and the Louisiana College Wildcats. Back to a victorious Louisiana college today, coach. And uh, I don't know if it's if it's good football, if it's a combination of that and, and great color analyst work. Needless to say, it is victory at Louisiana College today. You hear the alma mater playing and, uh, and, and the student body singing along. Great crowd stayed throughout. And, and through the rain, through the lightning delays, and, and we were able to get it in inside that window. And your, your, your thoughts on, on this game and your first experience up in the booth with no stress on you. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, a lot of fun. Look, we were talking off air at halftime. Being able to win a game like this, it, this, this helps. This is a program-defining win because, you, you know, they've been playing in a lot of close games. Winning that close game is a totally different matter, and they won this one. It gives them confidence in future close games that they're, they're going to go out there to go for the win, not just not to lose. We did, going out and finding a way. And you've got to find groups around you that hate to lose more than they love to win. That's when you know you're going to have the difference. So we have our MVP that we like to award at the end of the games, of course, the player of the game, if you will. And uh, I'm going to turn that over to you. I'm going to you, you, you mastered the starting lineups. You, you nailed the keys to the game. And so we're going to let you pick who you think should be our player of the game. Yeah, no, I think it's pretty unanimous up here. James Powell, uh, seven of 12, three touchdowns. Uh, you know, his rushing stats, he had 13 attempts for 73 yards. You know, what, what's in there is that long of 37. If they'll remember that last drive right there that got those last three points, we were down, it was a big third down, and he broke a big one. Really helped seal the deal to get those last few points. And so James did a great job, was dealing with some cramping in that second half and was came back and, and fought through it. So really proud of him, really proud of that Wildcat offense and defense. I mean, defense had some big stops uh, as well. And so total team effort, special teams, I mean, when, it, when all all three phases of the game contribute to a win. You can go watch it. You can be happy tonight as a Wildcat fan. Indeed you can, Coach. And uh, we, we thank you for taking your time out of your duties as a Alexander Senior High School offensive coordinator. Look forward to a big week as district starts. Assistant uh, or offensive coordinator of the undefeated Ash Trojans as they get ready to travel to West Monroe on Friday night and open up that tough District 2-5A. Coach, uh, we wish you the best of luck in that one. Stay healthy, and, and you guys go get them. Yes, sir. Appreciate it. Thank you for the opportunity. Loved having you up here. That's going to wrap it up from Wildcat Field. Certainly want to give a big thanks out to Jeff Young and his Convergence Media staff, his award-winning Convergence Media Department here at Louisiana College. We know that couldn't any none of this could be done without the work that you guys do. So Jeff Young and and all of your your workers, thank you so much for that. Certainly want to thank Ben McLaughlin for coming up in the press box. Want to thank Bella Basco back in the studio. 
keeping us on the air and keeping us running in spite of us trying to mess things up. And, of course, want to thank God for giving me the ability to do what I love to do just one more time. Until next week, God bless you all, and good night. Wildcat winner, LC41, the Aggies 35 on 104.3 The Bridge.